Sarasota Memorial Urgent Care.
And you're looking at a live shot of the stadium at Braden River High School as the Braden River Pirates get set to take on the Manatee Hurricanes in a battle of undefeated Manatee County teams in week four of high school action. And this is the broadcast live this evening of the Manatee Schools Television Network High School Football Game of the Week. Dr. Skip Wilhoyd along with Chris Conboy bringing you all the action tonight from Braden River High School on a very soggy evening, Chris. Yeah, we got a, a rain. Looks like it's letting up right now. And it's not that bad, but the field is pretty soggy. We're going to have a lot of uh, issues with footing, I would assume. Uh, wet balls, uh, if they, you know, have to be changed and players running over for towels, that kind of stuff. But right now, it looks like it's going to hold off. We're going to be able to get some football in tonight. As long as there's no lightning, football's made to be played outdoors and made to be played in weather like this. So that's not going to impact a whole lot. And when we talk about the modus operandi of the Braden River Pirates, that running game that they have, I think that's going to be something that they try to lean on tonight to get that edge against the Manatee team uh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that, that's their recipe for success. The same thing they did against Palmetto. They have to run the ball downhill, which they did successfully against Palmetto and control that line of scrimmage on offense and stay ahead of the chains. So we talked about that a lot two weeks ago. When they do that, they can run their play-action game, and Coach Sanders can surprise them with a few passes after a couple of good successful runs. That's when they have success, and they eat clock, and that's, that's their game. That's the kind of game they want to play. Yeah, very little wind out here, and again, the rain has subsided a little bit, so the passing game should not be impacted too much. Uh, and generally, when you do have rain out there anyway, the advantage often does go to the offense as it is because the defense is the one that's got to react on that slippery field. And we talked about both teams coming into this matchup undefeated. And, you know, we talked also about Palmetto. For Braden River, two weeks ago, they took on that Palmetto Tiger team here, an overtime game, great way to open up the MSTV broadcast season with that overtime matchup. But now Braden River looking for a clean sweep of the 4S13 district with Lakewood Ranch, Palmetto, and now Manatee on deck. Mythical 4S13 champs if they can win tonight. So we're getting ready for the uh, national anthem here, Skip. Yeah, the color guard about to enter the screen here. And we'll just go ahead and uh, let them take over. Back after the national anthem. <coughs> well, like we were saying, Skip, the uh, the weather and the, the wet field should, I think, kind of play into Brain River's hands with what they do offensively, or if not, play into their hands at least, not hinder them. Manatee's offense probably a little more reliant on 
lateral runs and passing than Braden Rivers, so it could have some effect on them. But like you said, sometimes the wet field will help the uh, will help the offense, especially if it's not raining currently, and the ball can be dry. And then it's just wet footing, and that does definitely give the advantage to the offense sometimes. That's right. We Manatee is pretty uh, pretty much a well balanced offense. Uh, Corey Sanders running the football. Uh, a couple hundred yards on the season already, 222 yards. Uh, Johnny Squitieri and Andrew Heidel are going to be splitting reps, at least we anticipate that'll be the case. They've been doing that uh, all season long, and they alternate within the game. So both of those guys, Squitieri a junior and Heidel a sophomore, we expect to see uh, carry or, uh, attempts by both quarterbacks tonight. In, in addition to Sanders, they'll have Keyshawn Smith, who uh, will get, a, get some work as well, and he's the son of uh, another Bayshore great, Keith Smith. So we have... Uh, who was in the backfield with Roy Bruchette. So we have Roy Bruchette Jr. and Keith Smith going head-to-head -to -head today as uh, running backs for other schools not named Bayshore. And Bruchette uh, <laughs> was at Manatee. So, you know, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, familiarity, if you will, from both sides. Well, anytime you have a crosstown game like this, these guys have played youth football with each other. They played seven-on-seven seven with each other. They went to middle school together. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of familiarity, a lot of uh, – chance for bragging rights and that's why these games are so important to play every year that's right both these teams now again manatee in the 4s district 13 and and braid river in the 3s district 13 and for those of you that have not been following the news the florida high school athletic association this year reclassifying football so all of us that are used to class 1a through 8a or 7a over the years that's no longer the case and the florida high school athletic association instead dividing teams up amongst metro classifications, suburban classifications, and a rural, rural classification. And Manatee County teams are all part of the suburban. So the 4S is going to be the highest district, and 4S District 13 involves Manatee High School, Lakewood Ranch High School, and Palmetto High School. And when we talk about the 3S, uh, that, that's going to involve Braden River, Parish Community High School, and Southeast High School. Uh, and also uh, down south, Port Charlotte, I believe, is also in that district. So all local football and for me the excitement there is that these matchups are going to count these district games are all local games and so bragging rights not just for the mythical county championship but actually playoff implications are on the line now this game is not a district game but again with Braden River already beating Palmetto in overtime in the first week and then going to Lakewood Ranch last week and taking out the Mustangs they're looking to make it a clean sweep of that 4S District 13 the Braden River Pirates are and the captains go to midfield. And we've got Johnny Scuteri out there as one of the captains. And along with Hayden Randolph, the center for the Hurricanes. Braden River, you've got Aiden Dangler, uh, Tanner Wolf, Pinder. Tavion Pinder, and I believe it's Mason Cole. Mason, I don't think it's Mason Cole. Mason Johnson. Mason Johnson. Mason Cole was one uh, guy that you called at East Lake who went on to play at Michigan and is in the NFL now. The names. Uh, that's probably it. I think he was number 70, though, so that's probably why. Yeah, my mind travels in interesting places sometimes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and Manatee wins that toss, and they're going to receive the ball. Manatee will get the first ball first. Like you said, there's not much wind right now. It's, the flag is just lying down, and uh, they'll pretty much. Uh, and really, for the first time in probably six hours today, the rain has actually stopped. So there is no rain falling from the sky right now. The field's still a little bit wet, so those conditions are still going to play a little bit of a role in this game that you would expect. But the offense should be unimpeded largely. <clears throat> As the Hurricanes get set to take this field behind their banner, in the south end zone. And here come your Braden River Pirates with the pancake patrol flag. Complete with maple syrup. <laughs> and here come your Manatee Hurricanes. And they have their Billy Blowhard flag. Quality mascot. That's old school. Quality it is old, old school. school. Yeah, Billy, Billy's been around a long time. Both of us have uh, some roots with Vanity and uh, way before we got there. That is true. He was around in the 70s. 
Was it the 70s? I thought he. I thought Billy Blowhard was even older than the 70s. He might be. I just know yeah. he was around in the 70s. I have to do a little digging on that. He's probably been around longer than anybody other than Coach Shannon, who uh, <laughs> is now 100 years old. That's hard to believe. I'm sure he's probably listening to the game on the on a Manatee radio broadcast. But there are a lot of ways to tune into tonight's game. That's for sure. And we are working with the uh, TV production class uh, for Braid River High School. And Manatee also doing their own live streaming as well. And not to mention the MSTV broadcast that we have live tonight. And as we get set to kick off, just go over the referees. Jim Ask is your referee. Kurt Sewer is your umpire. Headlinesman is Dave Rydell. The line judge is Kevin Fucci. The back judge is Mark McCrone. And your clock operator up here in the booth is Wes Fritz. And Bruno Roos getting set to kick this thing off for the Pirates. We'll see the big leg of the sophomore here who uh, just seems to be getting better, and as coaches say, better and better every week. He, this should go in the end zone. And as expected, it does. And that's one thing that uh, Coach Bradley loves about his kicker, not just the accuracy with field goals, but he's making the, opposite team, the opposing team start at the 20-yard line every time. And so Manatee's going to begin first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Corey Sanders in the backfield for the Hurricanes. And it looks like Heidel's going to get the start tonight at quarterback for the Hurricanes. And the pitch, Sanders. And Sanders has got some running room. Pickup of eight yards on first down. And a nice way to begin this initial drive for the Hurricanes. That's a good safe call to start a game as a play caller. You want to call something that doesn't really matter what they line up in just in case they don't give you what you're used to seeing. So running a, a, a nice safe toss there, kind of an old-fashioned student body left or outside zone blocking usually and uh, toss it to the tailback when you got a guy like Sanders and see what he can do. Mantee's going a little unbalanced here, it looks like, into the boundary. And it's Sanders again, chopped down Dangler. right at the line of scrimmage. Aiden Dangler, the linebacker for the Braden River Pirates. It's a great play. And they, they Manatee did this against Sarasota, running that unbalanced into the boundary, and uh, Sarasota wasn't able to adjust, and they ran that play uh, repeatedly down their throat, and uh, looked like Braden River was ready for it there. And tonight we've got two Danglers starting on the defense for Braden River. His brother Ronan, a freshman, also out there. Third down and three yards to go now for the Hurricanes. Coach is very high on Ronan. Uh, when I talked to their coaches earlier in the year, before he was even up on varsity, they knew it was a matter of time before he'd be up there. Randall and Bean split out to the bottom of your screen. Hand off to Sanders, and Sanders is going to battle his way close to that first he's down, short. but it looks like he's going to be a little short. Greg Marcus. Half a yard short. Marcus Waiters looked like he was in on that action, and Marcus Waiters, the last time we saw him against Palmetto. Lights out. Man on a mission. They're going for it in their own end here, fourth and one. I wouldn't be surprised to see them just try to get Braden River to jump off sides. That's a gutsy call deep in your own territory in the first possession of the game. They're going, if they are going, as quarterback sneak with that formation. And you called it, Coach, and they're going to get that. Big call. Jacquez Green, the head coach for Manatee, Hur the Manatee Hurricanes. That's just showing confidence in your offensive line, telling those big guys up front, we think that we can get a yard anytime we need it. We try to give them some confidence, and he ended up getting six on it. That's also confidence in your defense. That's true. As it is, it's going to be a first down out of the 36-yard line for Manatee. And Coach Green in his second year now with the Hurricanes. Second year as a head coach overall, 15 years as a high school head coach, the former Florida Gator and Tampa Bay Buccaneer. First and 10 now from the 36. And we got our first pass of the game. And that pass looked like it was intended for Bond Bean Jr., B.J. Bean, and that's going to sail over his head incomplete. You had to run a little flood route over here. They had to clear out by the outside guy. Bond ran a, a, we used to call a sail route, uh, kind of a deep out. And then the uh, tight end was coming underneath. The big 6'7 tight end was coming underneath on the drag. And that'll bring up second down and 10 after that incomplete pass. 
Bean now to the bottom of your screen. And Randall split out to the top. Slot is going to be Ramsey Cole. And Heidel's going to keep that ball. Heidel with a little bit of room up the middle. And he's going to pick up a nice chunk, about eight yards on second down. And that's going to bring up third down and manageable now for the Hurricanes. Yeah, that looked like a, uh, a jet with a, I don't know if it was a read or just a fake jet and ran quarterback power, you know. Again, nice blocking up front, big hole. It's a very common play in college these days and historically at Manatee when Coach Canan was there, that was a, one of the staples of his offense. Third down and two. Keenan in motion, flag down. Looks like maybe some movement. Yeah, I think Keenan uh, accelerated that motion. That look, it was designed that way to draw the defense off sides, and it worked. The defensive end, out of the corner of his eye, saw that motion accelerate and came off the ball and was off sides. So Manatee's got a little, uh, little drive going here. Yeah, easy way to pick that one up. Gifted it to him. Now it's at the 49-yard line. First down and 10, Manatee. Heidel hands that ball off, this time again to Sanders, and Sanders with a little bit of room to the outside, drags a tackler for an additional couple of yards inside Pirate territory down to the 47. Tanner Wolf with a good play there. Um, they run an outside zone there. And Wolf, one of those senior linebackers, along with Aiden Dangler, the heart and soul of this Pirate defense. Four-year starters. So far, I think we've seen more plays made by the linebackers in uh, the first drive and not much from the D-line, which is a little different from the Palmetto game where it seemed like the D-line, particularly Waiters, was making plays constantly. From the 47, and Heidel's going to keep that ball. He's pressured. He's going to be brought down again. Tanner yeah. Wolf. You called him out there, Coach, a minute yeah. ago, and there he is making a huge play for that Pirate defense. Yeah, he tried to run a boot, and uh, he was unblocked off the corner, and uh, Heidel had nothing to do, but uh, maybe could have thrown it away and avoid the sack, but uh, he wasn't gonna have, he didn't have time to hold on to it and look for a receiver. And that sack's gonna bring it all the way back to the other side of the field now, the Manatee Hurricanes 42-43 yard line. And it's gonna be third down in that proverbial country mile. Be interesting to see if maybe Go to a screen to try to get the ball into the outside receivers, the quick guys outside or running back. And there it is, yeah, there's I the screen. Looking at it. He's got nobody open and he's gonna scramble, still looking downfield. He's got men down, he's got a man down at the field. first down marker, I mean at the original line of scrimmage, but that's, that's gonna, gonna be come well back short. anyway. If they, well, how'd they not call that? Lyman's 12 yards downfield, three of them. Yeah, it would have been declined anyway. That's going to bring up fourth down for the Hurricanes. So it looked like Manatee had something promising going on their initial drive, but it stalls out after that sack by Tanner Wolf. He, Big had, play. he had Sanders on the screen down here. I don't. He didn't throw it. I'm not sure if there was somebody in his throwing lane, but he gave up on it a little early, but that's exactly what they were thinking on third and long was try to get the ball to one of their speedy guys on the screen and see if maybe he can get it close enough to go for it on fourth. Instead, they're going to have to punt now from their own 41, 42-yard line. And back deep now for the Pirates, Torrey Holman, Holloman, excuse me, Colin Esso with a nice roll, but dies. It was hit, it hit the helmet. Yeah, we've got a flag down now as well. It hit the helmet of the uh, coverage guy running down there. Let's check out this flag, but as it is, that ball's gonna be spotted just inside the 30 yard line. Sideline warning. That's the first touch rule. Once that ball touches him on the helmet, the return team could have gone in and tried to pick it up, try to scoop it up off the ground, run with it. If they fumble it, there's no risk. They can always decide to take it back where it was touched originally by the coverage team. Uh, but So it was smart. The Manatee player grabbed it right away before the uh, Braden River returner had a chance to do anything like that. Looks like they're going to spot that ball at the 28-yard line. We're going to get to see Braden River on offense here. 
and see how their offensive line can do against this uh, vaunted Manatee defensive line, which their coaches feel is the strength of their team. And Nick Trier. One of the strengths. Nick Trier in the quarterback, been under the weather, gets the start tonight. And he's going to hand that ball off to Trevon Pinder. And Pinder with room off to the right side. And Pinder with a nice gain on first down. So we see a nice first down run by Manatee in their opening possession. And a nice run by Pinder and the Pirates. And that's, that's their MO right there, running the ball downhill. And that's going to be a pickup of seven yards. And they really like running behind number 70. Second down and three. And that's Mason Johnson, not Mason Cole. Correct. And again, Pinder on the carry right up the middle, but that Swift. Manatee defense is there to shut him down. No gain on the play. He tried to cut it back and lost his footing there. like Jaron Hill was. Jaron Hill will be credited with the tackle. Um, he was there, but it was more of a slip. And that's going to actually be a loss of a yard on the play. Third down now and four for Braden River. 35-yard line. And Pinder again with a carry. Big hole. It might be gone. And Pinder has got nothing but daylight in front of him. One man to beat. Great play by 22. That was Darren Jean. Saves the touchdown for Manatee after a huge hole and a big run. If you watch before the play, all 11 defenders are within five yards of the line of scrimmage. So when he bust through that hole, there was nobody, no support on the second, third level. And it was a very aggressive defense there. And Trevon Pinder with 192 yards last week against Lakewood Ranch. He's averaging 160 yards a game so far with the two games that they've played, and he's off to a fast start tonight. Got a water break here. Pinder the thunder to Roy Burchette's lightning for the backfield with Braden River. Was that a timeout or a water break? You know, did you see if they called it? They didn't call a timeout, did they? It's awful quick for a water break, but. Uh, well, we're at five minute mark. But I guess I, we are. I don't like in the middle of a drive when, when you do that and, and affect momentum. Um, as a coach, when I was coaching, you know, that, that break could have been given at the beginning of the drive or at the end of the drive, and instead of affecting the momentum of the game and giving the defense a chance to regroup, catch their breath, talk to their coaches. Fifty-five yard run there by Pinder puts them now down at the ten yard line. First down, and there's no sticks involved here. This is first down and goal. And we got Burchette in it running back now. Pinder catching, uh, catching his wind after that long run. And Burchette that loses fumble. that ball between Trier, and it looks like Burchette may have fallen on that loose ball. Outstanding job of getting that ball back because it was out there for the taking. Yeah, they never got the handoff. That was... Uh, they're going to lose four yards on that. Couldn't see whether he put it in, on the, in the pocket or not, but the ball came out right away before Burchette ever got a hold of it. And... We now got second and goal from the 14. And we got movement again off sides, it looks like, with Manatee. Well, they got the five yards back from the four they lost on the fumble, so. And we still got second and goal from the nine. Be interesting to see if Coach Sanders decides to go to the air here. Uh, he's got press man coverage on the outside on Kuntz, who is probably their best receiver, or at least the guy to go to the most. And it's one on one down the bottom here. Levita and Kazi split to the top, and it's Kuntz to the bottom. And Burchette, a little early move, he's wide, wide open. open. on the wheel route, wide open, nobody covering. Nobody on him. And that's going to nice be a catch. touchdown for Braden River. Nick Try to Roy Burchette, touchdown, Braden River. And just like that. Braden Boy. River takes an early lead off their first possession. Great call. We saw that developing right as the ball was snapped. You knew it was going to be a touchdown if you, if you put the ball in there. And we talked about Manatee's potential weakness in this game against the run. And Braden River's strength running that football downhill. And that time we saw Burchette and Pinder get in the action. 
but it was Pinder with that 55-yard run, getting him down into scoring position. And then that pass from Nick Trier, touchdown. Now we have Benny Hedgepath snapping for the extra point. And Roos puts it up and puts it through. And with four minutes and five seconds remaining in the opening frame, Braden River now takes a seven to nothing lead over the visiting Hurricanes. That was a, a great drive by Braden River. They didn't have the big run, but they got a couple, they got a first down on the run before that. And mixed the pass in at the end there. And that, that's their recipe. Coach Sanders will lull you to sleep and pound it and pound it and pound it. And then all of a sudden he's going to play action or, or hit a pass like that when you're not expecting it. And yeah, we saw that in that first game against Palmetto. They lined up tight to the formation. Everybody bunched in there. Extra tight, extra offensive lineman in that formation. And then they snuck in a couple of passes there after they lulled them to sleep, as you said. So we can expect to probably see a little bit more of that, especially after the success they just had on the ground in the opening drive. Yeah, as a play caller, if you're a good play caller, you're going to have something to protect all of your plays. So if you have a play that you like to run, you're going to have something that looks like that, that you can run off of that if the team's trying to take that away. Manatee got very aggressive defensively there, um, playing all man and getting a lot of guys up on the line of scrimmage to try to stop the run. I think the concern with the run and with Pinder there um, opened up the pass play when they ran the wheel route to Burchette and Coons ran a slant and it was wide open. Cole and B.J. Bean back deep for the Canes and that ball is going to be returnable right at the goal line. And that's going to be Ramsey Cole. He's going to be stopped at Great the 15-yard line. Outstanding coverage by the Pirates. First one down there was Dangler. He didn't make the tackle, but he slowed him up, and then the rest of the coverage team got in there. And Tanner Wolf also in there, the other linebacker. Or Tanner Wolf, I'm sorry, not Dangler. Tanner Wolf has uh, made three or four big plays already. He's he's pumped up tonight. He has. You know, we might even see Dangler on offense. We saw him in the first game out there catching passes as well as making plays. And, and blocking as a... Extra yeah. blocking receiver as well. The Manatee's got to not, not panic, just come out and stick with their game plan. And it's Heidel remaining in at quarterback for the Hurricanes. Sanders in the backfield. And that's going to be a handoff to Sanders. Ooh. Sanders, no running room at all off that left side. That's Dangler. <laughs> Aiden Dangler, number, big hit. Number three in the backfield. Boom. Loss of a yard on the play, second down and 11 from the, just inside the 15 yard line. Bean and Cole split out wide, Sanders in the backfield and Heidel at quarterback under center, or the shotgun. And Heidel's looking to the top there, and he's got his receiver open, first down. And that look, that looks like, I thought it was Number Ramsey four. Cole, but it is not, yes. Hit him on the slant there. And that's a nice Yvonne catch Reddick. And, run. and Reddick with that first down reception. Now we got three wide receivers split out to the bottom of your screen, tied into the top. Sanders in the backfield. And once again, a pass, and that's Reddick ball on the ground, dropped it. Yeah, Probably not a big gainer there, Coach, but. Uh, well, it's a tunnel screen. If they make blocks, you don't, I mean, you don't, it looks like they're. Uh, Waiters coming in hot. They have some trouble out there, but. And maybe a little bit of a wet ball. As it is, second down now and 10 for the Canes. Yeah. Now we have three receivers up to the Opp left. Opposite tight formation. Right. Hand off Sanders, or it's keeper actually, Heidel with the ball. He'll get minimal yards out to the 30 yard line. Pick up of maybe three. And that's Wolf again in the for the defense, making a play. It's gotta be about four tackles, five tackles now, plus a sack. Yeah, he's been very active so far. Third down and seven. Matthew ran a little zone read that time and quarterback pulled it. And 
in the end closed on the back and got a four yard gain, making it a manageable third and seven. Bean and Reddick, the twins split down to the bottom. It's gonna be a pass, receiver covered, Heidel takes off, he's got a little bit of running room, but he's gonna be brought down short. And that looked like the other dangler. That was the freshman, Ronan Dangler. Ronan dangler. Nice tackle. And yeah, that's gonna be fourth down now in two. And that tackle saved what looked to be like a, a good chance of getting that first down. So outstanding job by the younger dangler. Yeah, they're very high on the younger dangler. Coach, Coach Cooper, the offensive line coach, told me he wants the parents to keep having kids because every time one comes through, he gets better. they get better and better. So. And Holloman was back deep, but he's moved up here. There is no return, man, for Colin Esso's punt. Yeah, they're playing safe because uh, it's fourth and short. And they figure, like you said, the ball won't roll too far in the mud maybe, so just let it go down and get downed, and they're still going to get good field position. A little bit of a roll, but. They want to eliminate that possibility of giving up a fake for a first down. And Manatee's shown early on in this game that they'll do just that on a fourth down and one deep in their own territory on that first drive. And so Manatee's second drive falls flat. And Braden River's gonna take over possession of that football just outside the 25 yard line, about the 27 yard line. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention who's handling the snaps for Manatee, the long snaps. That's Wesley Choate. Son of son school of board Chad member. Choate, school son board son member. of Chad. I like that, son who's of Chad. Who's on the other end of the press box broadcasting for the Canes. And uh, also a former Manatee player and coach and a former Braden River coach. He gets around. Kochak in motion sets down at the end. And that's Burchette on the handoff. He's got a little bit of running room. It's about four. Hard to see exactly. That looked like. Max Freeman and maybe in on that tackle for the Hurricanes. Yeah, I couldn't see the number who it was. I, mean, I think Braden River's pretty confident they can run the ball on Manatee's defense. And Braden River's shown they can run the ball on just about anybody so far this season. Kochak again sets down on the end. Burchette in the backfield. Trier. And he's looking to throw that ball. He's got Coots open, but he's also got a man wide open and misfires. Boy, it looked like that could have been a big play. Well, once again, Manatee's up all 11 men up within four yards of the line of scrimmage. And... If you're going to get that look, you got to take your shots every once in a while. And he did get open, 17. Sammy Levita, the intended receiver for the Pirates. And that's going to bring up third down. He had a step on him. He got outside. The ball was a little bit in, too far inside, and he couldn't adjust to it. Third down and five. Dryer out of the gun, Burchette, and he pitches that ball to Burchette, a little behind him, but he clean, cleanly handles it. Tripped up, and he's gonna be dropped right there by a swarm of Hurricane defenders. I think he might have just gotten the first down, though. It's gonna be close. It looked like- Depends he, on the spot. It, we'll check this out, but that's a nice fight and battle if he gets the pitch, down. If he gets the pitch out in front of him, he probably gets the first down easily. He had to stop and reach back. It's gonna be fourth down. It looks like they're marking it short. And that's Fourth and one, and Coach Bradley will have the end of the quarter to think about whether he wants to go for it on his own end of the field here. You gotta love that timing right there. Fourth and one, huh, do we need a little extra time? Well, yes, you got it. End of the first quarter, and after one, it's your score from Braden River High School, the Pirates seven, and the Canes nothing. When I drop my kids off, and I see that they're on time, and they've been delivered safely, it gives me a lot of personal satisfaction to have done this for the community. I would encourage anybody who is like me, retired, to look into this and consider because it really has worked for me. Start a great future with the School District of Manatee County. Apply now at manateeschools.net slash careers. Before coming to Manatee Technical College, I was definitely struggling with finding a purpose in life. But after going through the PCT program, I definitely discovered that I have a passion for patient care. 
Coming into the healthcare field, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it, but everyone was very helpful. Every skill they taught me was able to be transferred over into the workforce. Turns out that the field that I'm in is in super high demand, and I actually got a job while I was still in the program during my clinicals. I'd encourage anyone who is looking for a career change to definitely start at MTC. It's definitely made a huge difference. Welcome back to the river. End of the first quarter, beginning of the second now, and the Pirates up seven to nothing over the Hurricanes, and they're faced with a fourth down in inches. They've got their punt unit ready to go, though. They're gonna punt it, or at least line up in a punt formation. That doesn't mean they can't fake it. Manatee is in a safe defense again, just like Braden River was earlier. No it's, return, man. It looks like a little razzle-dazzle here. This is Emery and Henry from the uh, Steve Spurrier days. A little swinging gate, Emory and Henry. Yep, it's called Emory and Henry. All the linemen are out at the, at the hash marks and the numbers. They may just shift in and try to draw them off sides. Or a Manatee called timeout to talk about it. They force them to use a timeout by lining up in that formation. So. That's a, a good tactic to do just that. And a lot of times you see coaches use a formation like that to confuse the defense, force them to use that timeout. At this time, I'd like to shout out to the following restaurant to Joey. And one thing that we can say about both these squads, well-coached ball clubs, both of them. Yes, been a good game so far. Kind of how we thought it might go. I mean, Manatee definitely has an edge when you look at the number of kids on their roster, when you look at the size advantage. But Braden River. That's every week for Braden River. Though. Yeah, they, they, they <laughs> hang tough. Yes. And, and like we said, a well-coached ball club that can overcome some of those roster deficiencies. I think the thing about Braden River is they know what they are and they know what they have to do, and that's what Coach Bradley and Coach uh, Sanders do on offensively and defensively. They coach within what the personnel that they have. A lot of coaches will try to coach their way and, and disregard what kids they have, and you have, to, you have to coach in a way that suits your personnel. And again, no return man for Manatee, and Bruce set back to punt. Now remember, he had a fake punt earlier, and here we go, a little trickeration. And a flag Manatee is jumped. down. Like, wow. Offsides, first down. Boy, you talk about playing chess out there. First the Emory and Henry formation, and then shifting into an offense causes Manatee to jump, and they give up the easy first down. That is big. Manatee already down 7 0, getting a little bit of momentum after stopping them on three downs. You know, not only is that deflating emotionally, but now the defense stays on the field. You know, on a humid night, it's not hot, really, because of the rain, but it's still humid out there. You run around in the mud. That tends to tire out the legs. Kids cramp up on nights like this. And so the drive continues for the river. Brayden River's a little, a little unbalanced here. Kuntz and Levita to the bottom of your screen, split out wide. Pinder in the backfield. And that carry's gonna go to Javon Pinder. Pinder's gonna be met in the backfield. Brought down that time by the Manatee defense. It looked like big 65. Is it 55 or 55, or excuse no. me, if he, Ian Johnson Kelly. The jersey wasn't halfway up his back. We might be able to tell. But. Those fives do look like sixes, but Is Ian Johnson Kelly, one of those dominant defenders for the Hurricane. Two tackles for a loss on the season, make it three now, or excuse me, three on the season, make it four to go along with a sack. Ian Johnson Kelly, whose grandfather, Johnny Johnson, JJ, coached at Southeast for many years, played at Southeast back in the 80s, played at Salem University with uh, with Terry Bowden. That's good knowledge to have. Jim, Jimbo Fisher was his quarterback, he's good friends. And Coots with a nice hand catch. Great catch. Boy, that was something to haul that ball in. Look at it. Great coverage, great defense. The, you know, sometimes the other guy just hangs on to the ball and nothing you can do. That ball was put on the money. Yes, nice throw by Trier. But again, a hands catch. You gotta like, you gotta love seeing a receiver bring that ball in like that. And especially when the coverage is tight. I mean, he was draped. You hear Diaz in the coverage for the Hurricanes that time. But it's gonna be first down now, across midfield stripe into Hurricane territory for Trier and the Pirate offense. Manatee is still playing man. They're just manning up and trying to get as many guys up on the line of scrimmage as possible. And Pinder. Drives for about four. Out of the 40-yard line. 
pick up a little over three yards, a little short of four yards. That's going to be second down now at seven, long six. Split out to the bottom. And then he jumped again. Wow. We're back. They didn't call it. They didn't call it though. They thought they had him, so now they're gonna have to rush and get this play off. And Pinder with that inside handoff. Pinder with yards, and he continues to battle and push that pile towards the first down marker. But he'll be short. Third down. We're about third and five now. Well defended by Manatee that time. Darius Thomas in there, the senior linebacker amongst other Hurricane defenders to make that stop and bring up third down at about five, a little less than five to go. I'm really surprised we haven't seen Kowchak in, get into the offense yet. Usually by this time in the game, they've already called something where he uh, pops open. So I'm looking for that here on third and five maybe. The tight end down the bottom here. He's got inside leverage on a release, but he's keeping him in the block. And he's got a wide open receiver, and the defensive back did not see that ball. That was a pick six. Yeah, if the, if the DB looks at looks at the ball at all, that's a pick six. Sammy Levita, the intended receiver for the Pirates, and wow. I mean, that was missed opportunity both ways. Could have been a first down, could have been a pick six for the Hurricanes. Well, I don't know if it would have been a first down, because he was coming up hard, the DB. <laughs> that's true put a hit on him, so. They're going for it on fourth and four. You gotta expect that deep inside, or at least on their side of the territory, on their side of the field. Or just trying to draw them off sides, maybe. That's been a tactic that's worked so far. And then see if they get something they like. I'm telling you, at some point, they're gonna release 87 Kowchick out of this formation down the middle of the field, and he's gonna be wide open. And the corner's got, got outside leverage on him, playing man, he's already got the inside release. And there's no help over the middle. It may not happen right now, but at some point tonight it's going to happen if they keep playing their defense. Timeout. Braden River. 7 0 lead. Fourth down. About four and a half yards to go. From the 37 yard line. Now Braden River on their second drive, extended by that offsides penalty for Manatee. And a little trickeration from that Braden River coaching staff to get him to jump. And, and eating up more clock, like we said, that's their, their MO, that's their recipe for victories. Run the ball, take your shots when it's there, eat up the clock. You got three receivers now to the top of your screen. Causey, Poots to the very top, and beat it. Pinder in the backfield. And it's going to be a throw. And try, Trier's under pressure, and he'll be brought down. Ian Kelly Johnson for the Hurricanes, and a big sack all the way back to the other side of the field. The quarterback's got to throw that away. You can't lose on a fourth down. You can't lose 15 yards on a sack like that. If it's not there, throw it away. You know, earlier we saw a huge sack by Tanner Wolf, and this time Ian Johnson Kelly with an even bigger sack on fourth down to flip the field and give that Hurricane offense another chance to tie this ball game up. Johnson Kelly started as a freshman last year, which you know at Manatee is not very common for guys to start as freshmen, so. I've only uh, known about two. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure over the years there's been a couple more maybe, but not many. First down now for Manatee at midfield. And a first Science. down strike. Squintari in at quarterback. And that pass is complete to Jaquez Randall for a first down pickup of 11 yards. It's a nice catch, good coverage there too. Another we're seeing some, considering the ball's wet and the ground's wet, even though it's not raining right now, uh, we are seeing some nice, nice catches by these receivers. I am a little alarmed at the way the wind's picking up though and the clouds we see to the east though. And it is blowing stuff all around the press box up here, that's for sure. They get a nice throw. You know, you talk about that wet ball. Yeah, and seeing. that's Quinteri coming off the bench cold. And uh, his first throw, hitting a slant. That's a good job. Money. They're going to throw again. Looking deep. Sluggo. Quinteri's got a man, but overthrown. Had a step anyway. Yeah, they saw the way the defender defended that slant so well, so they came back and ran Sluggo. It's a good call. And 
Reddick, the intended receiver, incomplete second down. Reddick got a step. He could, probably could have held the ball a tick longer and, and put a little more air under it. Might have had a chance. Not bad, though. You don't, you don't lose games on overthrows out of bounds. You lose games on interceptions. So you threw that ball where the, he, his guy's going to catch it or nobody. I like that axiom. You don't lose games on overthrows out of bounds. Second down and 10. Makes the handoff. Squitteri's going to keep it. Squitteri with running room. And Squitteri, Johnny Squitteri, inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. Good First run. down and 10, Manatee. They, they had him for a sack in the backfield. It was uh, 23, I believe. Unblocked on the boot there for Braden River. And he cut inside of him. He couldn't make the play. And Cameron Anderson. It's a big play. Big play for Manatee for Squitteri. Squitteri's injected a little life into the offense. Coming in off the bench. It's a little different look. He's a little quicker, it seems. Different, a little different style. First down from the 17 yard line for Manatee. Squateri, a quarterback. And he's going to hand that ball off to Sanders, and Sanders is going to be bottled up after a pickup of a couple of yards, maybe a yard. Well defended by Braden River. It's 99 in there for Braden River. Miles Holman. Miles Holman. Getting in on that tackle. Yeah. He's playing inside tonight. Last you when know, we saw him against Palmetto, he played end. It looks like he's in and playing a zero and a th or three technique today on the inside. And that is a pickup of a yard. Second down and nine. And the handoff against Sanders. Sanders with room. Sanders Touchdown. into the end zone. Touchdown, Manatee. And this game is tied. Good job by the offensive line. Nice run by Sanders. Big hole there. Five plays, 50 yards for the Hurricanes. And they're an extra point away from tying this up. Holland SO on. Before you wonder if maybe it would have been better to let Roos Pooch a punt down there and pin him deep on fourth and four instead of going for it and giving up that sack. I know that's not wasn't their plan to get sacked, but that that was a huge momentum boost for Manatee. Without question, and you got to look at that distance though. Fourth down and inches. You, know, you can look at the play calling and say, all right, maybe we should have just like you said sneaked that ball over with such a short distance to go. But that's not how it wound up. And as a result, we are tied up at the river, 7-7 seven seven with 7.05 left to go in the second quarter. And now this game is starting to shape up a little bit more like what we expect. Back and forth, tough game, two well-coached ball clubs, and big plays on defense. This is a big part of the game right here. If, if Braden River can put a drive together and score to get the ball coming out in the second half, you know, so you can get a two for one here. That's that's your goal as a coach at this point. At the end of the sec, at the end of the first half, is get one of your drives where you eat the clock, punch it in the end zone, go up by seven, and then get the ball in the second half and have a chance to put the game away. So that's got to be what you know what Braden Rivers thinking. Manatee, on the other hand, you know they've just got the momentum. Their defense has to answer with a three and out, or at least not an extended drive. Seven minutes left to go in the second quarter. Want to get that ball back. Braden River, like you said, want to take the air out of that, give them a little bit of thunder and lightning on offense and see if they can move that ball on the ground. And that's going to be a short kickoff. Holloman back there, and it's going to trickle out of bounds. And that's going to give the Braden River starting off, or offense, a good starting field position. Yeah, that's... Uh Coaches pull their hair out when they see that, kicking off out of bounds and giving the ball at the 35. That's what we talked about earlier about Braden River's advantage with their kicker in, game, in almost all games. And the two games we've seen, uh, he's only had one that one kick where they didn't get in the end zone, but he wasn't trying to pooch it. So. We talked about the momentum that Manatee wanted to keep. Not a great way to start off keeping that momentum with the kickoff out of bounds. No, but Ian Johnson, Kelly, and those guys up front, they can control that right now. It's been interesting once again that uh, Kauchak, who was one of their leading receivers when we've seen them, uh, has been used almost primarily strictly as a blocker tonight. 
And if they feel they need the extra guy in there with the ends and the defensive line that Manatee has and the pressure that they put on people. Bumble. The ball's on the ground. Burchette lost that. And it looks like it trickled out of bounds, maintained possession, but they're going to lose yards on the play. And they go from the 35 backwards to probably about the 32. I think if I was Coach Sander, I might, I might put that one away, the option away for tonight. That's two times they've run it and two times they've had trouble executing the pitch and catch. They're going to mark that ball to the 31-yard line, minus four yards. Second down and 14 from the 31. Dryer. And he's under heat already. Gets it off to Pinder. And Pinder breaks tackles. Pinder still on his feet. And tough to bring down. And not a whole still lot of yards there. <laughs> Supposed to be a screen. They sniffed it out. Manatee off defense was all over it. There's two or three guys hitting him in the backfield. Ladarius Thomas with this tackle, the senior linebacker. And that's no gain on the play. It's going to be. Third down at 14. Now that big front of Manatee can pin the ears back here and go after the quarterback. And third and 14. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Coots, Kazi, and Levita. And Trier gets the play from the sideline from Coach Sanders. He's looking on court so one post. Deep. That's going to be overthrowing everybody. And so we talked about that hurricane defense needing to step up to maintain that momentum, and they did just that. Four yards, minus four yards on the first play, and that's the way it's going to wind up on that drive. Trier, Trier took a shot there after he released the ball and uh, was a little slow getting up. That'll be something to keep an eye on. Three and out for the Pirates. The, the advantage Mantee has there is one of their quarterbacks. They have two quarterbacks that have a lot of playing experience. We talked about that with Jacquez Green. That's by design to have two, two quarterbacks ready to go. B.J. Bean and Ramsey Cole back for the Hurricanes. And they try that to Emory and Henry again. Another timeout by Mantee. I guess they weren't happy with the way wow. they figured it I out mean, last time. Two for two. And Mantee better hope they don't need a timeout here in this first half. Hopefully they've learned from this. But you got to give credit again to the coaching staff of Raven River High School. Using every tactic in the book to their advantage. And special teams coach Dennis Stollard needs to have an answer for the next time that happens. Oh, it's turned into a great night for football here at Braden River. Started off soggy all day long, but you can't ask for better weather than this. The horizon looks a little dark, but right now under the lights, it's bright and sunny. And we've got ourselves a tie ball game with 5.31 to go in the opening half. And again, back deep, Cole and BJB. And Roos, oh, this is gonna be a shank out of bounds. And that ball's going to drift out probably around the 45, between the 45 and 50. Let's see where they mark it. I think it's going to be the 42. It's my guess. The ref's walking up the line here, and we'll see. Well, stopped at the 45. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm not sure it made it that far. Yeah, it, it, it was uh, maybe generous. Definitely the worst kick we've seen him have yeah, in the he, two I mean, games, game and a half we've done. Bruce with an unbelievable... Uh, place kicker and a good punter and who knows if the wet ball played any role in that but as it is Manatee takes over possession on the Braden River 45 yard line first down and 10. Sanders out in motion now it's going to be a throw and Squatiri at quarterback still throws it out to Sanders Sanders dragged down penalty flag down and he'll pick up maybe a yard and that's Connor Kasaya the safety of the tackle. Nice play, and it looked like he was held too, and that's why I think the flag is on the receiver out on the, in the flat out there was holding. It's against River. Or, or at least in the referee's opinion, he was holding. It's going to be marked off against Braden River. No, it was offside, so. Well, that goes back to first down now in five. Oh! 
The Stars are out over in the East Stands over there. From the 40 yard line, first down <laughs> and 10. Amazing we can do with cell phones. Huh? Is that what that is? And that's a first down carry, Sanders. I don't think that's Sanders, I think it might be Smith. You're right, 22. Keyshawn two. Smith, the son of Keith Smith. Smith is going to be close to a first down at the 36 yard line, just shy. Second down and one pick up a four. It's quarterback sneak. That's tight for him. Oh, oh man, got he just jumped. Hard to tell if that's going to be offsides. Waiters came across, but he might have been enticed. The right tackle or tight end, whoever that was over there, actually fired out. And I'm not quite sure what happened there. No they call offsetting? That, that would be unusual. And it is indeed a quarterback sneak. Squinteri, and that line gives a nice push for the Hurricanes. Easy first down pickup. Yeah, man, he's not trying to disguise that. They're not trying to trick him. They're bringing everybody in tight. The running back's lining up right behind the quarterback and push him from behind. and. Just telling our offensive line, fire out, and we can get two yards. And, and it's ball. worked twice. Yeah. And that ball's now outside the 33-yard line. First down and 10 for Manatee. And that's still Smith in the backfield behind Squitieri, who's under center. Smith. Not much running room there. That looked like Dangler, and it was. Dangler in the backfield for another tackle for loss. Senior linebacker all over the place along with Tanner Wolf is made out there. Yeah, they've been very active tonight. They've played well. They make a lot of plays. That that tells you the D line's doing a good job eating up blockers. If they can run to the ball and make plays, and the offensive line's not getting up to the second level. Squitari out of the shotgun now. Second down and nine. And Squitari's got a receiver bumped. And that ball's incomplete. A little bit of contact downfield at the first down marker. And that was almost intercepted, too, though. I don't know if it. The attended receiver, Jaquez, Jaquez Randall. Those Braden River DBs are, are aggressively jumping those in routes, and the, the slants, and that's why we saw them try, Matty try to run a sluggo a little earlier. And I'd look for them to try that again, maybe not this play, but at some point later on, a little double move with an inside move. Third down and nine for the 33. Squitari, he looks to run. He's gonna run. Squitari's got a little room, but he's gonna be chopped down. Looked like Dangler out balls, the, out. balls out of the ground. Two, Kasaya. Connor and Kasaya. Connor Kasaya with the fumble and the recovery by Braden River. First down and ten. I couldn't see who got the ball, but Kasaya made the tackle. I have a Twenty-six, maybe. Six is Jackson Wilson. Might have been him. I don't know. We can't. We don't have spotters. So uh, number twenty-eight, That's Zion Newell. Zion Newell, sophomore, had a sack last week against Lakewood Ranch. And Braden River's going to take over. First down and ten from the thirty-two yard line. They got three oh three. Try to put something together here and get momentum back. Plenty of time. Pinder, and he'll be stood up. Runs right into the cloud of dust and gets nothing. That's Braden Rivers' base play, the wide trap. Uh, defended well by Manatee that time. They got no movement on the down blocks. So even though you get the trap block on the outside, if you don't get any movement, the hole doesn't develop, and you end up with a one-yard game. They're still at the 33, so they must have had that ball at the 32, if my math is correct. So that's going to be second down and nine now from the 33. And Kuntz on the reception. And Kuntz will be brought down quickly. Short pickup again out to the 35 yard line, maybe two. Yeah, just a little receiver screen to the outside guy. A little spot pass, uh, soft coverage, but they came up, reacted well. Had him do a two yard gain. Darius Thomas again on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Third down. Third and seven now. 
Minute 57 to go in the half. And this is where Manatee's defensive line is giving Trier some fits. Oh, we got movement at the bottom of the screen. Looks like an early start for Sammy Levita. Uh, there we go. The wide receiver had the wrong count there, apparently. So that's going to bring up instead of third down and seven, third down and 12. Now, as a receivers coach, Skip, a former receivers coach that you were, you always watch the ball, right? <laughs> no receiver should ever be up no. sides. Well, they're, they're sometimes uh, a long way from that center. Hard to see that uh, ball you sometimes. You watch the ball. <laughs> you listen to the, he was listening to the snap count, I guarantee Absolutely. you. You got to watch the ball. You young kids out there starting to play football, if you're a wide receiver, your eyes are always in on the ball. And a lot of times that's indicative that he was the intended receiver on that play Well, call. that time like he was blocking them. Looked like he was coming off blocking. I know one wide. I know one wide receiver coach who would be talking for about 30 minutes uh, after that play. Chuck. Yes, Chuck Sandberg. Well, he'll talk about <laughs> anything for 30 minutes, so that's not surprising. And we hope an old wide receivers coach now retired and is listening in on tonight's broadcast. Driving range uh, monitor at uh, IMG Golf Academy. Good for him. Outstanding job that he's got now. So we've got a minute 24 left to go in the halftime out on the field. Third his, down and 12. His son Cord, former Manatee quarterback, is now coaching high school football up in Kentucky, Richmond, Kentucky, where he finished up at Eastern Kentucky. Is a new father. Chuck is a grandfather again. You keep saying all these things that make me feel old. That's, that's because just, that's, you are old. That's, I'm younger than you. Let's not forget that. Uh, everybody's younger than me, except for Chuck. <laughs> Here we go, third down and 12 from the 30 yard line. Big play. They're just gonna run trap, see if they can pop one there and not risk it. I like that call. And Pinder with a little extra effort. After what happened last drive when they went for it on fourth and got sacked and gave the momentum, Manatee a short field. I think that's a smart call on third and 15. They just ran the trap, hoping they could pop something through there. Now it's fourth and close enough that if they can draw Manatee off sides again on a punt, uh, they can get a first down. You know, that's a good point that you just made because Manatee has given them a couple of first downs with those offside calls so far. And, and Brayton River has come out with some exotic formations in their punts. And I'm sure right now on fourth down, you're going to see something at least to try to get that four yards via the penalty with no risk involved. And Dennis Stoller, who's been the special teams coach now going on probably 50 years at Manatee High School, I think will probably have his guys ready for the Emory and Henry this time. Now you're really making Dennis sound old. I had to. Makes me feel young. <laughs> Looks like a more traditional punt formation. And back deep, we've got Bean again and Cole. And Roos is going to punt this thing away. Little end over end that's going to roll, and Cole's going to grab that thing. Nice return. Get a few extra yards on that. Gutsy call to move that ball out to the 30-yard line. On the tackle, number three. Dangler. Dangler. He definitely makes his presence known on the field. Aiden yep. Dangler. He's been all over the place. We haven't seen him on offense tonight like we did against Palmetto, but... He's been a man on a mission on defense. Minute six to go in the opening half. First down and 10 for Manatee at their own 30 yard line. Well, the fact that we haven't seen him on offense may be why he's been even better on defense this week. And so Terry fires that ball, a fast one out of the bounds. And that was intended for Reddick. Overthrown, second down and 10. Minute two left to go in the first half. I'm kind of surprised Matthew didn't take the Braden River approach there and maybe try to get the ball to the running back and see if he pops one first before you decide if you want to start airing it out from back in your own territory. But Kind of thinking the same thing with a minute two left. You don't want to give that ball back to Braden River. You want to burn some clock off. If you're not going to score, don't give any time left for Braden River to do the same. Second down and 10. And that's what they do there. And here we go, Smith with a handoff. A little bit of running room out to the right side, and Smith out to the 40-yard line. He's going to be close to that first down marker. Third and one. Clock's going to stop at 52 seconds. 
They gave him a first down. They did. He's right at the stripe. First down and 10. They haven't moved the sticks yet, but Manatee's about ready to snap that ball. And Squitari looking deep. He's got a man over there, and that catch was made by Bond Bean. B.J. Bean out of bounds. Nice adjustment by Bean on that ball, though, to track that thing, but he was definitely out of bounds. Bon Bean's dad, Bon Shaver Bean, also played at Manatee back in the 90s. I believe he's coaching. He was a, a legend with the Bradenton Gladiators. Got a few ex-Hurricanes that have uh, made their way yeah. with those Bradenton Gladiators over and the years. Bon Senior was a great player. He was, uh, back in the day, he was a rocket Ishmael. We moved him all over the field. He played a little tailback, slot receiver, outside receiver, quarterback. Great athlete. Second down and 10. As Waiters. And Marcus Waiters. He seems to show up in the big moments, Waiters. We haven't heard his name uh, a whole lot tonight, but that's a big play to bring up third down. Clock ticking at 28 seconds to go in the half. But like I said earlier, when, when the linebackers are making every tackle at the line of scrimmage, and you're not, that, that means nobody's getting up to blocking them. And that might be part of why Waiters, we're not calling Waiters' name. He's eating up blockers. He's tying them up. You're exactly right, Coach. And if they watch the Palmetto film, I'd be worried about him too. So. And it looks like Manatee's going to be content to let this clock roll down. They're not even going to snap the ball again. And that's going to do it. The clock strikes zeros, and we had ourselves one entertaining first half from Braden River High School. It's the Pirates 7 and the Canes 7 from Braden River. And as the usual for the MSTV broadcast at halftime, we're going to go ahead and sign off and turn it on over to the sounds of the Braden River and Manatee High School bands here in just a moment for your halftime entertainment. Uh, but uh, when we talk about the first half here, really, Coach, it's kind of what we expected, maybe not this low scoring of a game, but Braden River on the strength of the running game with Trevon Pinder, uh, they got out there and they got those big plays. That got them down into scoring position and then Manatee with a couple of big plays as well. Big defensive plays on both sides, and that's why we stand all tied up. A very even game in that first half. Yeah, we got two really good defenses here. Braden River, uh, you know, their defense always solid. Coach Bradley, and uh, they've been playing well, and Manatee's much improved from last year on defense. That front, the defensive front, is very active, very big. Uh, you know, they're making a lot of plays up front, so uh, once again, looks like we have a game that might come down to a kick. It'll be the second week in a row. Uh, you know, maybe we'll get an overtime or a field goal with time running out like we had in the Palmetto game and uh, against Braden River, and we'll you know, have an interesting finish. It would not be surprising, especially when you look at the score all tied up, knotted up at seven apiece as we go into the half. All right, we'll go ahead and step out now and uh, as the Braden River High School band gets ready to take the field, I thought they were actually going to take the field there, but they're dealing with a lot of water on the sideline there. Can't quite see that within our screenshot, but they've got to navigate around the ditch that exists on the sideline. All right. Seven to seven, your score at the half, and we'll be back to start that third quarter in just a bit. Enjoy your halftime entertainment. After graduating, I had a job within a week. If I had not gone to MTC, if I had not attended the electrical and instrumentation program, <laughs> I can tell you right now, I wouldn't be in this trade. When I drop my kids off and I see that they're on time and they've been delivered safely, it gives me a lot of personal satisfaction to have done this for the community. I would encourage anybody who is like me, retired, to look into this and consider because it really has worked for me. Start a great future with the School District of Manatee County. Apply now at manateeschools.net slash careers.
I think we're ready. We're just a little winded from walking up the stairs because we're old. Let's rock and roll, baby. And, and we are back for your third quarter action, the second half in a tie ball game, seven to seven. Manatee and Braden River and coach again, a first half like we kind of expected. Two good defenses, a lot of great plays on both sides of the ball, and even special teams coming into play in this ball game. Yes, uh, we're, uh, Braden River running the ball uh, inside the tackles like we thought. Uh, Manatees had uh, some a couple of big plays pop. Braden River had one big play pop. But for most part, a good defensive battle at 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, the conditions really have not been a factor. I don't think we've seen one or two guys slip, but that happens all the time, even on a dry field. So I think they're 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 handling that part of it, that aspect of it, pretty well on both sides, both sides of the field. And there you saw Coach Kurt Bradley clean shaving. Coach Kurt Bradley getting his troops rallied up for the second half here. And Manatee also taking the field on the other side on your screen now. So, you know, both coaches going in there. Uh, not a lot of adjustments you think that need to be made on both sides. Just go out there and continue to do what they've done and execute, make the plays when they present themselves. And I think both teams are kind of probably happy with the performance they have out there. Now maybe the Emory and Henry plays that we saw multiple times that forced Manatee to burn timeouts might be a topic of conversation inside that locker room. And I did get a chance to talk to special teams coach Dennis Dollard at the halftime, and he assured me that they'll be ready should that happen again. Well, they may see it again, but uh, you know, I think both sides probably are happy. They knew this was gonna be a tough game, and right now you're in the game, and that's what you want going into the second half in a big game, tight game. Uh, looks like Manatee is going to elect to kick with the wind. I was wondering if they would want the wind now or in the fourth quarter. But I think it's smart to take it while you're kicking right now. Because the wind has picked up considerably since the beginning of the game. Got a pretty good gust going up out there blowing from left to right on your screen. And one good thing, though, the uh, there has been no more rain since the beginning of this football game. Rained all day, though. <coughs> you walk out on that field, and it's like walking in a Scottish bog out there. Uh, your feet sink into the field, there's no doubt. So there is definitely going to be some impact you would expect uh, on the play out there in the second half, just as there was in the first half. But again, a cleanly played game. A lot of great catches. Uh, that, not a lot of, but several great catches that we saw on both sides, some good passes. Uh, there were a couple of balls that did hit the ground. Well, I'm not as extensive a traveler as you, so I'll take your word for it because I don't know what it's like to walk in a Scottish bog. But. I was imagining. I've never been to Scotland <laughs> or walked in a bog. I was just going to take your word for it there. It's boggy. It is pretty sloppy out there, though. Yes. yes the ground is pretty soft. Uh, as everybody who's been lives in Florida knows, uh, we get a lot of rain this time of year. They haven't been able to mow it very much, so the grass is a little high. The ground's a little soggy. And... That, like I said, that's had a little input, little impact with a couple of slips by players, but for the most part, it's been pretty clean. I don't think it's affected the ball that much. The refs and the ball boys, the volunteer ball boys that run the balls in there have done a good job keeping the, keeping the balls dry and making it playable for the players. And we're getting set to tee this thing up for the second half. Colin Esso's getting ready to put that pigskin in play. Joshua Edwards back deep. I think that's, that's going to be Holloman with the return that time. Both of return backs, two return backs there, and it's Holloman that gets the ball. And Holloman's going to take it out to the 25-yard line. <laughs> Number 31 on the tackle. That's our Ronan. Oh, no, that's for Manatee. I'm sorry, that's the wrong team there. 31 for Manatee on the tackle. Special team. We're gonna find them on our roster. Yeah, the wind's doing a nice number here with the open uh, press box that we have, so things <laughs> are flying are up here. Everywhere. As you said, the wind's picked up a little bit here. First down and ten, though, from the 25-yard line for Braden River. Nick Trier back in at quarterback. Pinder in the backfield, and a high snap. And he's able to get that hand off cleanly, but not much cooking there for that first down carry. And that, that front for Manatee has been tough to move. Uh, since that first drive, they had a couple of big holes, but the last couple of drives have really been plugging the gaps in there. Big Tyreek Robinson in there along with a host of other Hurricane defenders, 6'3", 285. Big guy right there, 99 in the middle of your screen. Their coach is uh, very high on him. He's only a junior. They has said he has great grades. and Honors classes. Yep. 
Pinder again, got room off the left side, and Pinder still on his feet. Trevon Pinder, first down, Braden River, all the way out to the 45. Great to the run, ran the wide trap. Like I said, that's the, that's the base play of their offense, uh, 17 trap. And uh, they get the kick out block on the end. He gets just inside of it, makes a linebacker miss, and turns it into a big play. And Ladarius Thomas finally brings him down, but not before a big first down out to the 45-yard line. If you've seen Brighton River play the last couple of years, you, you've seen that play a lot. That's, like I said, that's their bread and butter. And Pinder again on the carry. This time, oh. Ian Johnson Kelly there to say no. That's a big play right there. That's a big hit. Fighting off the block. Stands him right up at the line of scrimmage. That's, that's a 200-pound running back he just turned over there, too. That's a guy that we see running through tackles most of the time. That's a big-time play. Ian Johnson Kelly's been living in that backfield. Five tackles for a loss now for the sophomore. And he's about 260 himself, so not lighting the bridges by any stretch of the imagination. Second down and 10 from the 45. Fake the hand off the pinder and Dreyer open. open. There's your call check catch right there, coach. Across midfield to the 49. He missed number one. Koontz was wide open on the corner route behind everybody. And Thomas again on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Kowchak was open as well. He took it for, for a nice game, make it third and manageable. And it's going to be a third down at four. Talking to the Matthew broadcast team at halftime, they uh, expressed their, their concerns that, about Kowchak releasing down the middle, down the seam, which we haven't seen yet because it's been a Big play for, for Braden River in the past, so. You called it. They're expecting it as well. And here we go, third down now and four from the Manatee 48 yard line. A double tight with uh, Koontz and, and Kowchak lining up his tight ends. And Pinder with the carry, and he's gonna run into a mass of humanity. Moves the pile, and that offensive line kept grinding, and Pinder kept those legs churning. And he's gonna be close, but half ultimately yard, short. Half a yard short, a foot short maybe. And that's just a great stakes. effort, though, by that Braden River offense. And here you go. Here's that fourth down call earlier in no, the game. No, they gave him the first down. They called the first down. Imagine that. They did. That's a generous spot. But nonetheless, it's a Braden River first down. From the 45-yard line. And off to Pinder, Pinder again with Broom. Off the right side, he's gonna pick up five yards on first down, nice carry for Trayvon Pinder. And Thomas again on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Pinder coming out to get a breather now, and Burchette's going in. Lightning of the thunder and lightning at Braden River. And he'll give him four yards on that down to the 41 yard line of the Hurricanes, second down and six. And Burchette, with a little bit of room out there, picks up a couple of yards. That's gonna bring up third down and just a couple. Third and two and a half, it looks like. Third and two. Hard to see who got in on that tackle. Might be third and three. Uh, we'll go with a long two, how's that? Short long three. three. Short three. I like those tweener numbers. Looks like the yardstick is just short of the 35 yard line for the first down. For the line to gain. 38. And Burchette hitting the backfield and he'll be brought down short of the sticks. Number five finished it off. And that's DeMontez McDowell for the Hurricanes. Big tackle right there. Now here we go with another fourth down situation. And what you know, it, it's inside of five yards, so the Hurricanes better be disciplined on this down. Well, they're going just regular offense here. It doesn't look like they're bringing out the punt team or anything. And you would expect that with the field position that Braden River has. Big play, fourth down. And we've got a stoppage on the field. Timeout, Braden River. They want to talk this thing over. 
Coach Eric Sanders wants a little bit of time with his quarterback Nick Trier in the sidelines. Let's see what they can cook up here in the lab. And on the other side of the field, Hurricanes, you got to believe they're saying, don't jump, watch the ball. It's not just wide receivers, Coach. No, that's true. The whole defense <laughs> plus wide receivers. I'm sure that's part of what's going on in the whole plus. They're going over every possible scenario for different formations that Braden Irving has shown or how to adjust to them. There you get a good shot of both coaches. Coach Phillips, the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes. Coach Eric Sanders, the offensive coordinator for the Pirates, talking to their crews. Coach Phillips made a, has made a big impact at Manatee. A lot of people over at Manatee are raving about him as a defensive coordinator and helping in the weight room with Coach uh, Rich Lansky as well. Coach Phillips played at Yale and played in the NFL, the Texans. He's also the area director for Fellowship of Christian Athletes. From the 38, fourth down and four, big play. And here we go, hard count, and the Hurricanes aren't biting. I think he just, I think Coach Sanders just wanted to see what what defense they're going to be in so he could make a call accordingly. A pooch punt maybe? Nope, they're going to go for it, and it's Pinder with a carry. Pinder with room, made a man miss, first down, Brayton River. Wow. Inside the 35 and down to the 32-yard line. Heck of a run. 99, Tyreek Robinson had him in the backfield for no gain. He ran through the tackle. Like I said, a 200-pound back, and that's what he does. He runs downhill. He runs behind his shoulder pads, and he t moves the pile towards their goal line. That's a big man to run through in 99, and Pender did just that. First down at 10 from the 32-yard line. The river on the move. There's a trap. And Pender with a hole and hits it, but he stood up just inside the 30-yard line. Well, it looked like he missed a bounce there maybe that uh, if he could have bounced that outside, they had the trap block by 56. Elliott Parker did a good job pulling and kicking out. They had a little hole there. He still got two, two yards, two and a half yards, but I think he had bounced that as he went through the hole. He might have had a chance for a big play there. Max Freeman in on the tackle to make sure that he didn't for the Hurricanes. 30-yard line, second down now, and... Let's go with that long seven. Looks like we got Burchette at the slot to the bottom along with Coons, and he's looking at Burchette. Burchette got a step and just overthrown. Inside the five yard line, incomplete pass. That's gonna bring up third down and that long seven to go. Yeah, he had him there. He had a step on everybody and it was just a hair too long. Diaz on the coverage for the Hurricanes. They've missed a couple of deep balls, just slightly overthrown tonight. And this again is a big play. Third down, just on the outside. You gotta believe with Bruce, they are in field goal range, sloppy conditions out there. He's got a strong leg, but that's a 47 yarder from here. Yeah, I but think when you take a shot there, you're probably thinking it's four down territory anyway. You got two runs to get the first down. And they do indeed run it on third down and Pinder's gonna grind out five yards on that carry and get that ball down to the 26 yard line. Now it's gonna be fourth and four. It might be a field goal try here. Not quite five yards on that carry. No, they're leaving the offense in. Three on the pickup. And like you said, they knew going into that play, two runs, and that's exactly what they wanted to do. Max Miranda, 75 from the Braden River, the center, was signaling kick. I don't know if I'd like to see my offensive lineman asking for a field goal and not want to go for it, but Coach Sanders had a different idea. And there's Pender, and Pender stood up in the backfield. Outstanding job of Manatee closing that gap down. It's a big stop for Manatee, a big momentum swing right there. Again, hard to see who was in on that tackle, but it looked like Max Freeman, amongst others, that was in there. Linebacker for the Hurricanes. And we're going to get a turnover on downs now, and Manatee takes over at their own 26-yard line. Great defensive stand by the Canes. It may be a little bit too long of a field goal attempt in these soggy conditions, but in a tie ball game, points are at a premium here. Yeah, you were right, that was Max Freeman, 57, made that tackle on the fourth down play, according to our trusty spotter. 
doing a great job. Now, Braden Rivers defense has got to step up here. Man, he steals a little, a little momentum there with the fourth down, fourth down stop and not getting any points out of it. You wonder if maybe Manti won't take a shot here on the first play. Kind of like you would do after a turnover, with the, after a fourth down stop. A lot of coaches consider a fourth down stop a turnover. Kobe. Maybe, maybe you play action and take a shot here. Kobe Keenan lined up in an H-back, tight formation. Pitch out this time to Sanders. Sanders makes one man miss, but he's going to get barely back to the line of scrimmage if that. No gain on the play. It's a good play by Connor Kasai. He missed the tackle, but he got a field and forced him inside of him, and then Pursue was able to get there and make the play. It's not always about the tackle you make. Sometimes it's about rerouting that guy and letting your troops come to the, to the, to the route. That's right. They're going to give him a little bit of a gain on that play, maybe a yard. That ball's now squarely on the 26-yard line. Second down. Actually, it's now 10. A tight formation for the Canes. Sanders with the carry. Sanders dragged down by the jersey that time. Number 51 for the defense. Or was that 31? It was 51. And 51 is Josiah Nicasio. Nice jersey tackle. Pickup of a yard and a half, maybe two yards. That's going to bring up third down and eight for the Hurricanes. Ball spotted at the 28-yard line. Zion Newell in the pass rush specialist for Braden River. 28. And Heidel just a little bit too high for his intended receiver that time, Reddick. Would have been right there close to the sticks, but as it is, it's an incomplete pass fourth down. And I don't think you're going to see the Hurricanes go for this one. No, great job on Coach Bradley's defense there going out and getting the three and out after that fourth down stop. That's huge for momentum. Absolutely. Looked like Manatee. And, and still in position, end up with good field position possibly. We haven't seen many long punts uh, from the Manatee punter, so they should, be, they should be getting the ball at the 40 approximately or somewhere in that range. That's where his feet are now for the punt. So that's pretty good field position or the opportunity for good field position. And Colin Esso with the punt. Good snap. And it's a low end over end punt, but it takes a nice hurricane bounce on that soggy bog. And that's going to be down by the Canes at the 31 yard line. So it didn't look like a pretty punt but it was pretty effective. Well, that's the design of those rugby punts, is to kick it, get the roll out of it. Um, you know, if you have a punter that most of them are soccer players at some point, and you're more comfortable doing that, you can kick the ball end over end and get a nice long roll, get your coverage down there. They're hard to return those punts. I did think Brain River came close to where they almost could have blocked that one, though. It looked like somebody came off the, their right side, Manti left side, and he rolled that way and could have possibly had a chance at it. Well, Manti with three up backs to protect the punter on every time every time they drop back to punt. So that's going to be tough sled to get in there with a block. Burchette now in the backfield behind Nick Trier. And it's Burchette with the carry. Burchette bounces it out to the left side. And Burchette with room. And Burchette with a nice shifty move to get it out past the 40-yard line and close to a Braden River first down. And that last move at the end, a uh, little shake and a four, uh, stiff arm. To get that last yard, might have got him the first down. A little shake and bake by Lightning, Roy Burchette. Great bounce. A little jump cut out of the hole, and he made about three cuts to the outside. And that was enough for a first down. All right, Coach, they're moving those change. sticks. So a good start to the second drive of the first half for Braden River. Ten yards on that opening carry. And we're now rolling inside. 245, 244 to go in the third quarter. Still tied up at seven here from Braden River High School. First down and 10. And we got a false start at the top of your screen. One of the receivers with a little bit of a lean. Once again, looking at the ball, right? Can't be listening to the count. Gotcha, Coach. Watch the ball. That's going to be driving. That's something Coach Sanders will... 
be thinking about all night tonight. Well, let's see if it hurts him. Right now it sets him back five yards and that's gonna bring up a first down and 15. Ball spotted now at the 36 yard line. Man, he's still really not honoring the pass much, um, you know. That slot receiver, is, oh, and the ball's on the ground. Trier, good job picking it up, but that Manatee defense was in the backfield, and they're gonna get him for a loss on the play. I think he, I think he stuck the ball out to fake it, and Ian Kelly. pushed against the running back and dropped it on, on the little fake there. And it wasn't really a fake, it was just a flash. Or, wasn't designed to be any contact at all. I think the ball might have got knocked out of his hands. Either that or it was wet and he dropped it. And that ball's gonna be now back inside the 35 at the 33 yard line. And that's gonna be second down and 18 to go. Nice play. And a hurricane stout defense right there. Limited that carry by Pinder out to the 30 not, or 34 yard line. And that's not Number gonna 41. get it done. And Darius Thomas again, making his presence felt. Getting up near to double digits on tackles for the evening. Anytime the first guy takes him down, takes Pinder down, that's a, that's a good play. Third down now in 16. Nick Trier looking deep. He's got a man breaking open. It's Levita and Levita's covered like a blanket out there. Daniel Dunbar with the coverage for the Hurricanes. The pass is incomplete, and that's going to bring up fourth down for the Pirates. We're going to have to put this one away. That's the second or third ball we've seen. Deep ball has been inside. You've got to get the ball to the outside, and he's left it inside. And, then, and if it is inside, the receivers have got to make an adjustment and try to get out to the get over to the ball. Run underneath it. Maybe draw interference call by doing that. You've got that tight coverage, though. That's a yeah. lot easier said than done. Well, you can make it look, make that interference, possible interference, look much worse than it is if you make an adjustment to the ball. And BJ Bean and Cole back. And this ball is going to be short again on the punt, and it's going to roll sideways, out of bounds. Good field position for the Canes at about the 36, 37 yard line. First down. Both defenses standing up here in the second half. Braden River makes a big stop. Manatee turns around, does the same thing after going three and out. They need a big stop there, and they got it. A couple of miscues that time by the Braden River offense. Penalties, mishandled snaps, ball on the ground. Manatee says thank you very much. And that ball is going to be spotted at the 38-yard line. First down and 10. Reddick to the bottom of your screen. That's going to be a handoff inside, and that's Corey Sanders. And Sanders with a nice run on first down, picks up nine, maybe ten. Looks like number three, Dangler, on the tackle. Imagine that. In, in the mix of it. I don't know if he made the tackle, but he was around the ball as usual. That's after a nine-yard gain, though. Matthew offensive line getting a little movement that time on the front. And indeed. They have a a decided size advantage over the Braden River defensive front. Just shy of the 47 yard line, second down and one. Oh, and that pass was Great almost break. picked off. You're right, Coach. Great, Great break, break in the ball that time. Number 15. Javon Moore. That was almost a pick six, too, if he picks it off. I was lucky that thing wasn't picked. Eyes on the ball and made a good break on that. Nice play. That's going to bring up third down and one. And a good time on a second down and one for a pass play over the middle, but you got to be careful with that ball. Yeah, I, I prefer a shot if you're going to throw on third and one, something downfield, something that there was no chance of that happening. Sanders in the backfield, tight formation, back but it's going to be a big-time keeper. That's not a lot of resistance up the middle that time by the Braden River defense, and Heidel easily picks up the first down across midfield into Braden River territory, first end down and quarter. 10. End of the quarter. Manatee's been a great quarterback sneak team this year. Heidel took one uh, 55 yards against Sarasota on a quarterback sneak. So that's something they've shown they can do, and they'll do it multiple times a game. And that's going to do it for three quarters. Your score still. 
from Braden River High School is the Manatee Hurricane 7 and the Braden River Pirates 7. This is Officer Beerholm with your Traffic Officer Minute. When backing out of a driveway or leaving a garage, watch out for children walking or bicycling to school. Be alert. Children arriving late for the bus may dart into the street without looking for traffic. Do you know when to stop for a school bus? The yellow flashing lights indicate the bus is preparing to stop. Drivers should slow down and prepare to stop. Red flashing lights and extended arms indicate the bus has stopped and children are getting on or off. Drivers must stop and wait until the red lights stop flashing. The extended stop arm is withdrawn and the bus begins moving. All drivers moving in either direction on a two-way street must stop for a school bus displaying a stop signal. It must remain stopped until the road is clear of children and the school bus stop arm is withdrawn. On a highway divided by a paved median, all drivers moving in either direction must stop for a school bus displaying a stop signal. It must remain stopped until the road is clear of children and the bus stop arm is withdrawn. And yeah, welcome back to Great River. First down and 10 for the Hurricanes as they look to throw that ball. Heidel looks, no receiver open. Scroll to his right. He's got an open receiver. The big tight end. And that's Kobe Keaton, the six foot seven tight end for the Hurricanes in a big first down, first play of the first quarter, fourth quarter. That was a great job by Heidel buying time. Uh, you know, it wasn't his primary uh, read, but looks like it's coming back on a holding call. And the Braden River crowd reacts positively. Not so much on the other side, though. I can't hear them, but I'm going to guess you're right. <laughs> well, it was a good job by Heidel buying time, keeping his eyes downfield. Um, you know, he's, he's shown he does like to pull it down and run. Him and Squinteri both are pretty athletic and will run. But he kept his eyes downfield and saw him pop open and hit him. So. And that spot foul is going to take him all the way back to their own 41-yard line. Even though that play doesn't count, that's a growth play for him as a sophomore quarterback when they're watching film. But something that he can build on moving forward. So it's going to be first down and about 21 yards to go here. And Heidel's got a man wide open. And that's B.J. Bean. No, check that. That's Reddick on the reception. And Reddick right there at the stick is going to be a yard short. Pickup of 20 yards on that play. Heidel to Reddick. That was a nice little, little RPO, faking the zone read and uh, pulling it out and hitting the slant. And Heidel again on that quarterback keeper flag down on the field. Heidel. Reddick lined up offsides down the bottom here. It's going to be offsides on Manatee. The wide receiver there in a hurry to line up, and he was lined up offsides. Boy, the penalty's really dinging up the canes on this drive here. Two steps forward. And he wasn't set. Back. He was not set either. But I think if you see that he was also on the wrong side of the line. That's going to hurt. And that ball's now back at the 44 yard line. Still second down. Second and about seven to go. And I'm sure for Manatee, this is definitely four down territory. I don't think their field goal kickers will be kicking any 50 yarders tonight. So as a play caller, you know that, that the, if they we're in four down territory that you don't need to get it all in one play or two plays. That affects your play calling. Manatee going back into their huddle. You got the coaches on the field. When I, when I was working for Coach Meckley at uh, Cardinal Mooney, he would come down and tell me at this point in the drive, you've got three plays to get it, you know, to make sure I knew for my play calling that I didn't have to you know, worry about getting it in one player. You have two plays to get it on a third down play before you called your play. Second down and seven from the 44. We've got again a stoppage here. Looking at the play clock. And the clock showing 11 minutes. Trying to read the hand signals of that referee down there. I think he's trying to get 11.15 on the clock, looks like. And there you go. Good call, Coach. We've got 11.15 on the scoreboard, and we are getting a thumbs up from the side. I think it just ran fire. during that last uh, pause when they stopped on the, on the uh, penalty. And Heidel looking to throw it. He's looking deep. He's got a man open with a step. It's Reddick. Reddick with a nice catch on the sideline. And that's going to be caught 
inside the 10 and down to the six. First down and goal, Manatee. Great Ryan. ball, great ball from Heidel. Uh, outside shoulder, just what I was talking about the Brain River uh, with Nick Trier with through the ball inside. And you got to get it outside. You put that ball on the outside, or it's either be caught by him or nobody. And the biggest play of this second half so far by either team. He's got Manatee set up in a first down and goal from the six. Manatee's going quick. I think it might just quarterback sneak it here. You're right, coach, and he's going to be bottled up this time. Nowhere to go. Oh, he's, he's still on his feet. See, he has a he has a knack for running that quarterback. I, I gotta he's, give him he's credit a big, there. He's a big kid. He doesn't go down easy. And he's going to bring that ball inside the five down to inside the three yard line. So a pickup of three yards, where it looked like he had nothing initially on that play. Second down and goal from the three. This is down here is where I really dislike the quarterback running over to the coach and getting the play. And after that hard run, he has to go run all the way over the coach, get the play run back. We got ourselves a tight formation here. Oh, what a play by Dangler. Wow. Yeah, it was Aiden Dangler in the back Again, field. and it, he, he's, he's hitting the guy as he gets the ball. Just shot the gap. And Miles Holman cleaning it up. Loss of the plate. That ball is going to be spotted back outside the five yard line, it looks like. We'll check that four yard line. And Heidel's over at the sideline getting the next play. And we got a timeout, Manatee. Third down coming up for the Canes. And a big, big down for both teams right here in a 7 7 ball game with 10 minutes and one second left to play. Now, I got to ask you, coach. We talked about four down territory when it's out around the 30 yard line. Chip shot field goal range right here. If you don't get any yards on third down, are you kicking this? Uh, I think if you're in field goal, I mean, if it's an extra point length field goal, I'm probably kicking it. If you lose any yardage here, I don't know. I'm not sure, I don't know how you know their kicker is as far as range. Um, not everybody has the luxury of a kicker like Braden River has or, or Palmetto with their kicker, who uh, you know, are pretty good back to 40 yards. But I'm guessing that he probably is pretty accurate from this range, so I would think. Uh, I would hope from the four-yard line, the field yes. Goal. Yeah. But by the well, same I watched Riverview not be able to do that in an overtime game last week and lose to Palmetto. So. The upside of going for it, should they not make this third down conversion, though, is you pin the Braden River offense deep. But let's see what happens here on third down for Manatee. Timeout, timeout. Manatee. They just took a timeout. That would be back-to-back. Or is it time That's got to be Braden River. River. He pointed See, the Coach way. Yeah, you got Bro Coach He Bradley pointed to Coach there. Bradley, but <laughs> should be pointing towards Braden River <laughs> on the line. So both coaches understanding the gravity well, of this play right here in terms of the outcome. It was a good game. timeout, though, because as they came over to the huddle, they had 13 guys. So rather than line up, if you line up for play with more than 11, it's a penalty. And that'll so be he, had to, he had to call it. He had to call it before they actually got lined up. You don't have, the play doesn't actually have to start if the ref counts it beforehand. He can call the penalty. So. That ball back now again after that loss on second down at the four yard line. I would think with the two athletic quarterbacks that Manti has, whichever one's in there on this play, that you want to try to roll him out and give him an option to run or throw. It's Heidel in the ball game. Maybe right some now. sort of bootleg or you know a, a flood route where you can roll out and have an option, but they're in like a power formation. And that handoff's Sanders. gonna go to Sanders. Nice move in the backfield, and Sanders powers his way into the illegal, end zone. Illegal but we procedure. got a flag down again. Somebody, they, I think they snapped it before the line was set. They were still going down when they snapped it. They've really been trying to get the snap off early, and it's, it's cost them several times. Third penalty on this drive for the Hurricanes. And again, two steps forward, one step back. And that's a big penalty on third down. Now from the nine yard line, third down and goal. Almost takes the running game out of play here, coach. Yeah, I, I would think you gotta throw on this down unless you're satisfied with a field goal. You don't wanna risk an interception or a big, or a big sack. Maybe you run the ball with a guy like Sanders who's capable of breaking it, you know, from 50 yards, let alone nine. You run the ball, see if you can score. If not, you kick the field goal and take your lead with, with nine minutes left. And depending on what happens here on this third down play, I think you're right. I think this actually takes the field goal, the fourth down attempt, out of play and, and puts the field goal back into play. Yeah, unless he gets uh, Some significant eight yards. yards from the nine and you end up on the one, then you got to make that decision again. But. Agreed. Meanwhile, we get another Manatee timeout, second one and two plays. 
So three timeouts by both teams. Again, underscoring the importance of the drive. outcome of this drive. Yeah. yeah, this is huge. I mean, for Braden River, if they can hold them to three, I think they see that as a victory after giving up the long ball and that pass. And for Manatee, that's a bit of a, a deflation if you don't get it, you know, you don't punch it in. But yet, they'll be coming away with a three-point lead with a field goal. And putting their defense out on the field has been doing a pretty good job so far. So. First down and goal at the four to a third down and goal at the nine. Let's see what the Canes have got. Heidel, look at the end zone. He's got a receiver, Bon Bean, and overthrown. Can't hit the corner route. The ball was out of the end zone, really had no play. Bean had some steps. And that's going to bring up fourth down, and on comes Colonesso. And the field goal unit. And I think this is probably what we would have expected. You don't want to try to get a fourth down and nine conversion for a touchdown. You got to come up with points here in a 7 7 ball game. Points are at a premium. So like Bon Bean is the holder. So 20. Good hands. Wesley Choke snapping. 26 yard attempt for Colin Esso. That's blocked. Oh no, they got it Choke. through. Yep, Choke wow. got it back and Bean got it down and Colin Esso puts it through and the Hurricanes with 9 49. I don't know how it got, game. I don't know how that got through there. There was four guys in the backfield that had a chance to block that and got it through. It was a low line driver at that. But nonetheless, the score now from Braid River High School is the Hurricanes 10 and the Pirates 7. And again with 9.49 to go in the ball game. Big play leads to big points. Not exactly the seven they were looking for, but the three gives them the lead. Well, Manatee's got to be a little concerned about their protection on that right now. When you're over on the Manatee sideline, you're probably trying to get that short up because there was a lot of penetration there that you don't want to see. And a lot more passing on that drive from the Hurricanes than we had seen all evening with Heidel airing it out. They've got that long gainer down the sideline to Reddick to set up that first down and goal. But the Braden River defense, you got to give them credit. They stiffened when it mattered. And again, mistakes by the Hurricane offense with penalties. Yeah, like I said, the three points at that point after the completion down the sideline, that's that's a victory for them if they can hold them to three. And they almost blocked it and held them to a zero. So they get the ball back now with nine minutes and they field goal can tie it or they can drive down for a touchdown, take the lead. So. Holloman and Edwards back deep for Braden River. Colin Esso set to kick it away for the Canes. And that's going to be a short kickoff. Holloman at the 12. Holloman's got room. And finally, that gap closes quickly down at the 30 yard line. Good tackle by Smith. Smith. He didn't wrap him up, he just kind of shouldered him down. It was a good hit, probably not a form tackle, but you probably tell the coach he's a running back. Definitely not a form tackle. Good athletic physical play though. Which I think they're still allowing those in football these days, right? They are. Yeah. It's not two hand Occasionally. touch. Occasionally. Getting close. Well, the Braden River offense takes the field. 9 43 to go in the ball game. Down three points. Ball at the 31 yard line. First down and ten. In the I back. expect to see Coons getting the ball here. We haven't seen the ball thrown to him much. He's been seems like they've been targeting Levita more today than they did against Palmetto. And Pinder with a shifty move in the backfield to avoid the first defender. He's going to get that ball out to the 33-yard line. Ian Johnson, Kelly blocked out of the picture as well, but nice move by Pinder. Pickup of got a, well, we got a down. defender down. It's a 50 number, I couldn't see the second. I thought it was 54. It looked like 54 to me as well. Come on, let's take over the game. That's Ponder. As the Hurricanes training staff takes a look. Both teams go to the sideline. And so you'd expect with 928 here that Braden River, plenty of time, they're gonna play their game. Pinder has really been the bulk of their offense. We, you, you mentioned Kuntz earlier, that beautiful catch, that hands catch that he made in this ball game. So they've got the horse to be able to do a call check at tight end. They've got Kuntz out there. Uh, 
We've seen Levita targeted several times in this game as well, but it's been Pinder and a little bit of Burchette that have been the majority of this offense tonight for Braden River. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case most of the year. Uh, you know, that's that's their offense, the Thunder and Lightning. But uh, I'm, I'm just it's just surprising that uh, Koontz has been has been targeted less than uh, than Levita today. And that may be normal, but you know, the one time we saw them against Palmetto, Koontz was a big part of the game plan, it seemed like. And good news there is Marcellus Ponder able to jog off under his own power. The ball again now at the 33-yard line, second down and seven yards to go for Braden River. They have uh, Bruchette and uh, and Pender in at the same time now. Bruchette's in that little wing. He's in motion. And he's going to be make jet sweep. And he's looking deep. wide open. Dryer, and there's Coots, and the ball short. He was open by five, six yards. He throws the ball out there. It's a touchdown. Could have been. He might have been able to see with that big number one what kind of speed he would have because it was. That was a well-designed play. They, they put Burchette in, brought him in motion. I'm sure that alerted the Manatee team defense. They take the jet sweep to him. Everybody jumped up, and uh, Koontz was wide open going down the middle of the field, and the ball was just underthrown. And that's the shot you were just talking about going back to Koontz. Didn't work out that time. Third down and seven from the 33. Braden River uh, sideline wanted an interference call, but I don't think that was interference. That was underthrown. Underthrown, correct. Trier again outside. There's, There's your flag. flags. On third down, big penalty against that Hurricanes defense, that's secondary. That'll be a first down. And it looked like the defender just kind of barred Koontz from getting back out towards the ball and making an adjustment on it. And that penalty is going to be bring the ball out past the 40-yard line past the 45, excuse me, to about the 48. Dunbar, Daniel Dunbar. Penalty. Well, you're asking a lot of these corners and safeties at Manatee, they're playing man all night and they're not getting any help, so it's, you're gonna get those calls sometimes. You're Braden, gonna get beat sometimes. Braden River now on the move. 9.07 to go in the ball game. First down and 10. Pinder on the carry, and Pinder's met in the hole. Ladarius Thomas that time by Manatee again. Into double digits on his tackles for the evening. Yeah, he's playing a great game tonight. Once again, though, it's like I said about Braden River, when those linebackers aren't getting blocked, it's usually because the guys up front are doing a good job and eating up double teams and occupying blockers. And big 99 and for Manatee. Tyreek Robinson, he was in there. And those guys are eating up blockers and linebackers can run the ball and make plays. No gain, second down and 10 for 48. Trier looking to pass that ball, looking deep, under pressure. He's got a man open, it's Koontz. And that throw took a lot of courage as DeMontez McDowell was bearing down on Nick Trier, but he was able to get off a nice ball, just a little bit overthrown. And again, Koontz, the intended receiver. And Coach Sanders might be listening to our broadcast and heard me say they hadn't been targeting Koontz much, so decided to give him three targets on this drive. Probably more than he's had the whole night. And that time, you hear Diaz had pretty good coverage, but Koontz did have a step. But again, the pressure by McDowell may have influenced that pass just a little bit. Third down and 10 yards to go from the 40. Just outside 47. the 47. And oh, offsides. Manatee again. That's got to be the fourth offsides penalty for the Hurricanes. This one's not going to burn them, but it's going to get Brayden River within half that distance they need for the first down. Yeah, now when you're looking at third and five, you're looking at maybe again a four down situation. You, know, you can get three on this play. And and you're across the 50 now, so you might be going for it. We're sitting back at your own 46. You're probably not going to go for it on fourth down. And let's see if the Hurricanes are able to get any kind of pass rush off here, if they do indeed throw this football on third down, or if they're going to be hesitant. And they jump again. They didn't go across the line, apparently. At least not in the referee's judgment. There was a lot of movement over there. It's going to be a handoff to Pinder. Pinder with a little bit of room to the right side. Bounces it out. 
And the Hurricane defense is there. Darren Jean coming up from the secondary to make a stick on him. And that's going to be short of that first down marker. Fourth down. They went back to the wide trap, which is, like I said, their, their favorite play, one of their favorite plays. And uh, it was defended well, closed, squeezed on it well. Pender was forced to bounce it, and then the DB came up and made a tackle. A lot of times the DB won't be able to make a tackle on a, a back Pender size. And here we go, fourth down, and Braden River with 8-10 to go in the ball game. They're bringing on Roos to punt this ball away. Manatee does put return men back there this time. A little bit of heat, and Roos gets that thing away. And that's Smith on the return. Smith with a little bit of room, but he's chopped down outside the 15-yard line. Great coverage that time by Braden River. That was that was a turf tackle there. That's the mud got him. He slipped. He tried to stick his foot in the ground. You can see the divot he took. Uh, and Jamari Rutledge, nonetheless, down there to make sure he he did get down. Yeah, to force him to make the cut. And that's you know he was doing his job. Now Manatee's going to have. Uh, Manatee's going to have 82, 83 yards to go here. But they have the luxury of having a three-point lead, and all they really need to do is work time off the clock. That ball outside looks like the 17-yard line from our vantage point here. And a handoff to Sanders inside. Sanders dragging tacklers for a couple of yards, not more than that. Dangler in the mix as well. For a change. Josiah DeCasio also in there for the Pirate defense. And they'll give him a pickup of four yards on that. That was good hard running. It didn't look like he had that much room to get four yards out of that. Those, those are hidden yards. You know, you don't see that in the stats line as a big run, but those, those add up when you're getting that extra yardage after contact. Especially on first down, big carry. And that's Sanders again on the carry, tripped up and driven back. He's going to still pick up about two yards, maybe three on that, out to the 25-yard line. A host of Braden River tacklers in there. I didn't see three in there, but I'm assuming he's in there somewhere. Kawchak in there on defense as well. That's something we didn't see as much of uh, against Palmetto when he's in playing defense, or if he did, we didn't notice it. But. I've seen Coons playing some more defense tonight than I've seen in the past as well, too. And here we go, third down and three yards from the 25-yard line. This is a huge play for Brayden River's defense. And wide open on the sideline to Bond B.J. Bean. That's going to be a first down for Manatee. And that's just a gift. They had real soft coverage out there in the corner. I don't know if that was a blown coverage. There was nobody getting underneath that little hitch out there. Well, you don't want to give them that much of a cushion when you're looking at third down three. and three, that's for sure. And especially into the boundary, the short throw from the hash mark, you know, that's quarterback's first read. You know, first read is a gift, and second read is the shortest, easiest throw. So that was a that was a no-brainer. And now Squatieri under center for the Hurricanes. First down and 10 from across the 30-yard line. Sanders on the carry. Sanders cuts it back. Sanders still on his feet. And gets that ball out to the 34-yard line. Pickup of four yards. They're going to give him five. Out to the 35. So Manatee's offensive line is starting to get a little more push now, even on plays where it doesn't look like they have a big hole. They end up they're getting four and five yards because they're moving the off, they're moving the line of scrimmage back. And they did give him only four yards on that. The chain moved it back a yard. So second down and six for the Hurricanes from the 34-yard line. Sanders again on the carry, nice spin move in the hole. Sanders still on his feet, driven back after he gets it out to about the 38-yard line. Third down and about two yards to go now for the Hurricanes. That's a nice powerful run on second down to put them in a third and manageable here, Coach. Five minutes and 12 seconds to go in the ball game and counting. They, they're eating some time off the clock. That's like I said, that's that's their primary thing right now. The clock is their friend. Brain Rivers gonna have to start worrying about getting the ball back. We're looking at a third down and a short two. That 
time. Sanders still driving, but he's going to be driven short, driven back short of the first down. Maybe got to the 39-yard line, fourth down and one. And that's a big time third down stop by that Braden River defense with 4.41 to go in the ball game. I don't think there's much of a decision here, Coach. They have, their, they have their offense on the field. I'd be punting it, but uh, they're going to go for it, and I'm guessing they're going to run a quarterback sneak. With Squitieri in there, not Heidel. Heidel's handled most of those quarterback sneaks that we've seen. So they're going to let the clock run down and think about it maybe, call a timeout? If they've got a timeout left, and I believe they do. They have one left. Well, they're going to try to get off here. Let's see if we get a hard count. Fourth down and one, play of the game. Hard count. Trying to draw them off sides with that motion again. I'm going to take the penalty and punt it. Yep. Delay a game. Now definitely have the punt team in now. There's guts. Three, fourth and six. And then there's crazy. <laughs> and when you are looking to go for it on fourth and one at your own 39 yard line in a three point ball game, that's a debatable choice. That's that's a good discipline play by the Brain River defense, though. They got burned by that same motion earlier in the game and jumped, and they didn't do it this time. So, you know, Coach Bradley and Rocky Smith and Matt, Ar Matt Arcady, the defensive staff, obviously got that, you know, corrected at halftime or when they came to the sideline and didn't jump that time. Well, you know, we said it before. We'll say it again. Brain River, just an outstanding coach team. Both of these teams, well-coached ball clubs. But that time you saw the discipline. They had to know that Manatee was going to try to get him to jump off sides. Holloman back at his own 42-yard line. Colin Esso set to punt it away for the Hurricanes. And Holloman's up a lot closer this time. All the kicks have been short. We got, we got motion on Manatee. Now. And that's not what you want to do if you're the Hurricanes. That's Every yard counts at this juncture of the ball game. Number 21. Move it back five and try it again. Holloman now standing at his own 47 yard line where they're expecting a pretty short punt here. He ran back. And they're going to get a little bit of a roll from Colin Esso's punt inside the 40 down to the 38 yard line. Good field position for Brain River though with three minutes left. Try to get down and tie the game. They do have the leg of Roos. Bruno Roos has got that leg and we, uh, we've we seen him make some, you know, in practice, some nice kicks. Yeah, I would say they got to get to the 30 probably. That'd be a 47 yarder. They've got plenty of time with 341 to go on the clock. You get that graphic or graphics people to put a red line across the field at the 30. That'd be the field goal. I don't goal think line. we have that technology. That's yet okay. Here. We don't yeah, need the that. field goal range. We'll, <laughs> we'll work on that. Just to remind you guys, this is only the second game of MSTV's broadcast of the Manatee High School football game of the week. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into that stage soon. First down, the 38. So they're going to go 32 yards, essentially. And Pinder's going to be bottled up in the backfield. Outstanding penetration. Pinder still grinding it back to turn a loss into no gain. Yeah, that front for Manatee is starting to take charge. That looked like 99 Robertson and also Ian Johnson Kelly in on that play for the Hurricanes. We've called those names a lot tonight, especially Ian Johnson Kelly. No gain on the play, 38 yard line, second down. I'm still and expecting uh, the tight end to release down the seam here. He looks like he's set to block. Let's see if he releases. He's no, been, he's blocking. Keeping him in for pass protection. Yeah, Ian night. Johnson, Kelly in, and Koontz is the intended receiver. And it looked like he had a step. That ball was almost on the money. But Ian Johnson, Kelly, number 55 for the Hurricanes, putting the pressure on. Three minutes, one second left, third down, and 10. And it's getting dicey, Coach. It's definitely getting dicey for Braden River, for Manatee. It's looking good. He had third and 10. Let your big dogs up front pin your ears back and go. Now, if I'm Braden River, you don't have to get a first down on this play. It's two down territory with three minutes left, in my opinion. So if you want to try a draw or, or a screen or something underneath. Make it manageable on fourth down. Make it manageable, or maybe you pop it. Let's see what they've got up their sleeve right here. Prechette splitting out into the slot. Pinder in the backfield. And 
Nick Trier is going to throw that ball. He's looking. He's got a receiver open, and it's Spurchett coming back for the football. And that's going to be a first down. Brayden River across midfield at the 49-yard line. Big play. Nice catch. Nice catch. Threw the ball throughout out in the open area, and Burchette went laid out and made the catch. We got flags on the play, though. Forward progress to the 47-yard line. Let's check this flag. I think they're going to call that Burchette was covered up and was an illegal man down here. It was very close as to whether the outside receiver was on the line or off the line, and the inside receiver was on the line. You got it, Coach. Yeah. And that negates a huge first down conversion by Braden River. And now that makes the task that much more difficult. Instead of a first down across midfield, they're going to be looking at a third down and 15. I saw the, the two receivers out there talking to each other, looking at the ref. There was some confusion as to who was supposed to be on, I think. And I think the ref, probably with the uh, encouragement of the Manatee sideline, now that ball's being spotted back at the 28-yard line. That's a 10-yard penalty. So now the third down at 20. You got 253 left to go in the ball game. You talk about four downs. There we go. I didn't think that that was going to be a 10-yard. That should have been five, and it is. So now we're looking at third down and 15. In the old days, that would have been a 15-yarder because he was the guy who touched the ball as an option. So he was treated as a more harsh penalty if the ineligible receiver was the one that caught the ball and touched the ball. Football knowledge that, and history. That, that's nice changed. Job. Here we go, third down at 15 from the 33-yard line. 234 at counting in the ball game. And for the first time tonight, we're going to see Matty with some safeties back 10, 15 yards. And Ian Johnson, Kelly in again with pressure. Burchette, the intended receiver, and that pass is incomplete. 2.23 to go, fourth down at 15 for Braden River. Here's your ball game. Yeah, I don't know, some, some coaches would punt here and try to try to hold them and use your timeouts. You got two timeouts. Two timeouts for Braden River, so. I don't know if I could do that this late in the game in a high school game, I think, I'm, I think I'd have to take a shot at it, but I could understand either one now. It's a tough call. You'd have and to have confidence in your defense to definitely get a three and out. And, and they're keeping. And call a timeout right after the play. Offense is on the field. Maybe they'll try to draw them off sides, shorten it up a little bit. Manatee has jumped several times tonight, and they almost did there. I think they're going to punt it, to be honest with you. I think, I think yeah, or at least they're going to talk about it. I don't know if they'll use a timeout wow, Yeah, Coach, that's, you, you got two defense. timeouts left, and there goes one of them. Yeah. Now, now you almost have to go for it, I think. Because I don't, you don't have enough timeouts. To You're 100 percent right. You're not going to be able to stop this clock. But so in, in that sense, it's a good timeout. If you were going to go for this ball, get oh, on, definitely. get on the same page. Yeah. If you've made the decision that you're going to go for from here, that's definitely good. That's, that's okay. But if you were going to thinking about maybe punting it and trying to get them off the field, you need those two timeouts on first and second down. Take your chances. Maybe they'll throw on third, and you get the ball back with you know half a minute left. I'd still try that hard count again. Manatee's been jumping all night long across that, that line of scrimmage. you got to be ready to snap this ball and execute your play. But give them a couple hard counts there before you snap that ball. And Pick up five free ones. This play could be the ball game. It should be the ball game. Well, now with one timeout by Braid River, yeah. they've got to convert this. Yeah, they, or a they, defensive penalty. If they turn the ball over here, it's, you know, that's, that's definitely the ball game now. So I've seen this play something down on the field. And here we go. Fourth and 15 from the 33. Game on the line. Quarterback Nick Trier takes the snap, looks downfield. Got enough. He's got Coots. Wow. Coots for the first down. Brayden River stays alive. Oh, and that ball is going down to the 46-yard line. 2.15 to go in the ball game. The big man down the middle, Coots. And when they had to have it, it was Trier to Coots. First down. It's nice to have a 225-pound receiver catch that ball and bounce off the of safeties right there. And it's nice that that 225-pound receiver's got soft hands. Very good hands. Excellent catch. Good throw by Trier. Good play. Braden River keeping his game alive now. Wow. You Caught. wanted excitement? I think they, we I, got it. I think they use a little too much time right here, though. They the are. Clock, they're taking their time. The clock that. is running. 
But remember, they've got Bruno Roos, who's an Tenders outstanding field goal kicker. Yards. And there's a pitch. It's going to be an option pass. Holloman's got a open. wide open receiver. Oh, my. A.J. Causey. What an outstanding play call by offensive wow. coordinator Eric Sanders. Wide open. And bless him. And I know you work on those trick plays all week long, and you get it to work that well. It's a shame. And Manatee takes a deep sigh of relief on that one. With a minute 38 left to go, that could have been the nail in their coffin. You knew when the tailback Holloman was lined up 10 yards deep, something was up. It was a little different formation. I'm kind of surprised the Manatee defensive backs would be sniffing up on, a, on an option anyway at this stage in the game. Should be trying, you know, staying, staying on top of everything. But. And that's the first time we saw Holloman lined up in the backfield all night. And McDowell on the pressure, Kuntz on the reception. Kuntz makes a man miss on the sideline, and Kuntz gets another first down, still on his feet. He, he may not have gotten a first down, though. it's gonna be close. It's at the 25 yard line, it. that he should be good it. enough. They gotta line up and run the play now. And that stops the clock. And now, creeping in to Bruno Roos field goal range at the 35 yard line. From our, you know, my, my, my math, I'd say they gotta get five more yards. Easy. But you got plenty of time with a buck 23 left to go to get those yards. There's enough time to punch it in. Let's see if they go back to Pender. Hard count. They're using 30 seconds almost, 20 sec 25 seconds to get this playoff. A little too much time. I think. And it's going to be another throw. And again, Kuntz. And Kuntz is this time met with a defender and drives out of bounds. Out Great of bounds. job. They, Daniel Dunbar for the Hurricanes. He's just a beast out there, Kuntz. The DBs are coming up and just hopping on his back, and he's carrying him for a ride out of bounds, get the clock stopped, and get to the 30-yard line, the magic field goal line, at least to think you have a shot from there. 55 seconds. And boy, when you thought they might try to ride Trevon Pinder down the stretch here, it's been Trier to Kuntz. Be a 47 yarder from right here. We know he's got the leg in practice. This is a trick formation here. You got a tackle lined up out here in the slot who's not eligible. And Manatee's gonna put a safety over him. And Braden River's gonna use her last time out. Nope. They are Don't take the penalty. And Nick Trier looking at the sidelines, waiting on the play from Sanders. They're gonna get a delay a game. And the tackle's gonna have to move, there it goes. You I mean, that, that. that was way, way too long. That and is that's huge. That's a five yard penalty on the edge of field goal range. That is huge. But we still have got 55 seconds left to go and it's only second down. So there's time left to get those five yards back. And that's gonna put the ball back at the 35, second down and 10. You know, if you're down there at the 20 with his leg, it's not going to make that much of a difference. But when you're right at the edge there at 30, 47 yards, you can't afford a pre-snap operational penalty like that. Especially trying something to, a little trick to get Manatee discombobulated. Second feeling, down. I think they'll run it here, probably run trap. Here we go again. Again, a flag comes down, delay a game, and Braden River just taking too much time to get the play call off. Now that did seem a little quick that time for the delay of game. Well, it's not when you break the huddle, it's when they set that ball down and start it, so. And boy, that's 10 yards the wrong way. In critical, critical field position with 55 seconds to go, now it's second down and 15. Now it looks like you're taking Pinder back out of the ball game and maybe have to throw this ball again. Let's see what they do. It's fake to Pinder. And Trier oh, loses boy. the ball. And Manatee's all over. The ball's still loose. And Manatee's Manatee going to recover it. It looks like 57. DeMonte McDowell. Well, 57. That's Max Freeman Max with the recovery. Freeman, with the ball. And boy, oh boy. What a heartbreaking way for Braden River to end this thing up just when it looked like they had every opportunity to win this game. Yeah, it's just a shame you don't get a chance to see the kick. We talked about having the game come down to a kick. You don't get a chance to see it. The, the 
excellent kicker, sophomore Roos, try to try to tie the game with a 47 yarder when they're down to the 30. And you gotta go back to those back to back delay of game penalties that put them in a passing situation to begin with. Not the right time for those types of penalties. Now it's just knee time, take a knee time for Manatee. Victory formation. Brayton River. They've got one timeout left and they just used it. 46 sec seconds left to go. Heck of a ball game between two undefeated teams, two of the best teams in Manatee County, and only one of them is going to leave here tonight with zero losses on the season. And right now that team's looking like they got red helmets and white jerseys. And there goes your knee as Johnny Squiteri takes that knee and the and that's clock. That's the ball game. You better watch out there, Bob Bean. And that's going to do it. It's the final seconds are about to tick off here at Braden River High School Stadium. The Manatee Hurricanes and their fans celebrating. The Braden River fans with their hands on their heads and their hands on their hips. As a hard fought ball game comes down to the very wire. Yeah, another great game with uh, two, two games in MSTV history, and both games come down to the wire. And Almost two overtime games in a row here. Two but, uh, I hate to see a game end like that. And, uh, and not yeah. only that, you, you, you go back to A.J. Causey wide open with that touchdown pass. Brayden River had a chance to pull this thing out with just over a minute left to go in the ball they game. They had multiple chances. Yeah. So, yeah uh, and, uh, Koontz, the game that he played, uh, that, he's just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, uh, the big man was out there making some clutch passes, uh, right. clutch catches, Almost and Trier making some great throws. Yeah. But as it is, it's going to wind up with a 10-7 Manatee victory over the Pirates. And the Pirates' chase for the Mythical County Championship is on pause right now. So Manatee will remain undefeated. They go to 4-0. and And we'll be catching Manatee in the next game that we have on the MSTV broadcast as they go to Lakewood Ranch to take on the Mustangs. For the actual district championship. But next week... Manatee is going to wind up taking on Port Charlotte. The Pirates, after they wiped out the Charlotte Tarpons last week, and Port Charlotte this time is coming back to Manatee. So the Hurricanes go to 4-0, and the Braden River Pirates, they drop now to 3-2-1 and two, two and one on the season, and they're going to wind up taking on Booker next week right here at home. So... Tough sledding here for the Braden River Pirates. They dropped their first game of the season. But a good game, two hard fought, two well coached teams. Uh, and we couldn't ask for a better ball game here tonight for these fans. I know the Braden River fans would have liked a better outcome than this. The yeah, weather held off, got a good crowd. Um, good crosstown rival. Uh, like I said, I'm just, I'm just so glad these games are being played. That it should be you know, mandatory that all the county teams that are similar sizes play every year whether they're in the district or not, because we have games like this. this. is what we need for high school football. And that's one of the benefits of the restructuring of the classifications. You know, we get six county teams out of two districts now, 4S and 3S District 13. Uh, and we've seen action here all season long. As a matter of fact, Braden River playing three games in a row against 4S 13 teams. They won the first two. They didn't come out victorious tonight. Hats off to the Manatee Hurricanes on their victory as they go to 4-0. and And that's going to do it. From Braden River High School, your final score tonight, it's the Manatee Hurricanes 10, the Braden River Pirates 7. For Coach Chris Conboy, I'm Skip Wilhoyt. We've had a heck of a ball game, two in a row now. And Chris, we're looking for our next one, Lakewood Ranch, as they host Manatee in two weeks. Yes, and when, I hope uh, Principal Dustin Dahlquist has a good spread in the pre uh, press box for us. If he doesn't... Um, you just reminded me to reach out. To, well, he, uh, he's going to hear this. Dustin. That's why I'm saying that. He better make sure. <laughs> he better make sure he's, he's puts a good spread in the press box. Looking for ribs, chicken. What do you want? Whatever. Well, we got it. We'll make sure we put that phone call in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for Braden River again. Uh, Skip Wilhoyt, Chris Conboy. We appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll be back in two weeks for Manatee and Lakewood Ranch. Until then, have a great evening and enjoy your football.